This is out of Hong Kong. I will speak um, in other sessions on other areas of the PA. Thank you. Dr. Johnny Ng. Thank you, Madam Deputy. The uh, fifth wave of outbreak is uh, most serious and dealing a blow to our economy and people's livelihood. Uh, this session is about uh, coming out emerging from the epidemic. I think it is a most timely debate. In the past few years or so, we have been working very hard to fight the pandemic. I am most grateful to healthcare workers for their efforts. Now, for this round of outbreak, to a certain extent, uh, we are the victim of um, overlax infection control measures overseas. So we cannot um, lower our guards. Mr. Johnny just visited uh, Shenzhen uh, last uh, Saturday, and uh, there will be uh, experts to help us, and there will be provision of our AT kits and also. Uh, anti-epidemic uh, supplies. This is most uh, encouraging. And presidency just made a very important instruction today. At times of uh, challenges, the central government will always be our strongest support. This is so reassuring. Still, we have uh, got a number of uh, thorny issues to resolve. The government has just uh, proposed uh, $27 billion in the sixth round of EPF to help uh, 65,000 uh, enterprises and 700,000 employees. Now, we must uh, hold on to the dynamic zero infection policy to safeguard people's lives and health. We must uh, publicize to the public clearly. We have to understand that we cannot uh, live uh, with the virus so that uh, uh, at this stage, uh, people can be committed to this dynamic zero uh, infection policy. Otherwise, uh, the uh, price uh, will uh, be very heavy. Now, it comes down to all our efforts to boost the vaccination rate so that we uh, will have the hope to achieve dynamic zero and uh, revitalize our economy so that we don't uh, always have to rely on the uh, support from the government. Besides, the um, transmissibility um, of Omicron is very strong. We have a lot of invisible transmission chains in the community. We have to exhaust uh, all uh, measures. The simplest way is to learn from the mainland to um, stem down the uh, trans transmission chains. I've, I've written to uh, the uh, government to uh, use a mixed uh, testing method so as to boost our testing capacity and also multiple um, major testing um, platforms should be uh, developed for confirmation of results. And also the government should identify more uh, venues uh, for isolation and testing purposes besides a public housing estate uh, for public uh, facilities uh, which are not in use at the moment, for example, performing um, uh, venues uh, or so on, they should be used uh, for such purposes. Recently, we have a cross boundary truck drivers infected. Um, delivery of fresh produce was interrupted and uh, prices were driven up. Yesterday, I wrote to the CE to chief, the chief executive to make use of um, advanced technology to use uh, drones to deliver essential resources without. Um, uh, a pilot, uh, these uh, drones can drastically reduce uh, the risk of infection. At this critical juncture, I hope the government can take the lead and unite everyone in Hong Kong to uh, contribute in the uh, effort. I hope that we can contain the, the epidemic as soon as possible and resume cross boundary travel and uh, return life and economy to normalcy. Thank you. Mr. Winston Cheng. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Deputy, the fifth wave has uh, spread. We are seeing more cases every day, um, some uh, 1,000 cases every day. It is the most critical juncture. In face of the challenges, first, we have to be resolute. We cannot afford to surrender to the virus by adopting the coexist with virus strategy. It is about people's lives. We don't want to see any more children or elderly people leave us because of the epidemic. We have to win this battle. 
First of all, I give my thanks to frontline uh, healthcare workers, uh, airport staff, security guards, and cleaning workers, and so on, as well as those who are contributing in, uh, to the fight. I give you my heartfelt thanks. This is a battle that we have to win. We have to be optimistic, especially when the central government has promised its full support for Hong Kong. Uh, we are seeing uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. President Xi has made uh, an important instruction in terms of helping Hong Kong to overcome the epidemic. The Hong Kong SL government has to take the main responsibility and um, attach top priority to containing the epidemic. And also, um, President Xi said we have to we have to mobilize every resource uh, resources available. Now um, we have to implement the instructions from the central government. The government should. Um, prioritize the fight against the epidemic. Uh, it is an overriding concern, and we have to um, collaborate with our counterparts in the mainland and chart out a plan to deal with the fifth wave. We cannot afford any um, any more uh, time. Uh, we cannot afford any uh, any more uh, time loss. Now. Our testing capacity and um, and um, manpower shortage as, um, are not enough as well as um, we are not adopting um, the uh, the uh, innovation technology um, required. Now we need to increase um, the number of um, isolation isolation facilities, and our healthcare system is um, as the brink of collapse. Many people have to stay at home, even if they are confirmed and they are feeling helpless. We have received a lot of. Uh, uh, calls for help. Uh, one family member is infected, and other ma family members are at risk. Um, they are still at home after one week. Uh, children uh, infected are experiencing fever, and the parents are very anxious. Now, the HA has established a hotline and designated seven clinics to support those who are still um, to be who are waiting to be admitted. But this is not enough. We have to increase the number of facility for isolation, and we have to establish a mechanism to offer swift uh, triage um, for patients according to their age, uh, their, uh, their fitness, as well as their uh, symptoms and uh, household um, uh, situation and so on. And we have to prioritize admission to hospital for elderly people and children. And maybe um, uh, for those with mild symptoms, uh, they just need um, um, a little help, and uh, can we make use of hotline and um, and ask for, um, what the patients need and deliver the medications and supports needed to them at home? This is how we should utilize our resources and provide the uh, appropriate support for patients. Madam Deputy, um, close contacts and close contacts uh, household members are still staying at home. Uh, for my constituency, uh, many. People are living in subdivided flags, and it is not suitable for them to stay at home. There is um, a hotline of the uh, HAD uh, running 24 hours uh, per, uh, a day to offer help, but this is not enough. We hope the civil service, um, the civil service can mobilize all resources available to um, to offer help. For example, collaborating with. Um, district volunteer groups and uh, outreach teams to uh, provide help. In terms of help, people have to wait a few days for the results, and the queue is long. Actually, we have um, drastically increased our testing capacity thanks to the support uh, from the central authority. Uh, we now have um, more labs in Hong Kong. And also, we should have a non-lockdown a universal uh, community testing or community testing. Previously, the government did not have the resource to uh, perform these tests. Now, with the help from the nation, uh, we can surely do that. Now, finally, about vaccination. There are two uh, bottlenecks. First, the vaccination rate of elderly people and children is low. And secondly, we don't have enough uh, people to help. Now, the government should um, coordinate its efforts and um, uh, and resume the uh, vaccination at school uh, for primary students uh, by sending out 
outreaching teams, and also outreach teams should be sent to uh, RCHAs, and also priority uh, tickets should be offered to elderly people. And during a restriction and uh, testing uh, declaration, uh, maybe we, it is a good opportunity to vaccinate the residents, and also we should at least the help of uh, private doctors and uh, private sector uh, healthcare workers to uh, to help. Now, I thank um, people in all sector, including civil servants and those in the private sectors, as well as um, the DAB members. We will definitely win this fight. Thank you. Dr. Chang Men Kong. Madam Deputy, now the fifth wave is worsening. People across the sectors are concerned. It also caused the concerns of the President, President Xi Jinping. We are concerned about people at different positions. We made a lot of suggestions. They are practical. The purpose is to avoid overwhelming our medical system. Now, we have um, preliminary cases staying at home. The media estimates that there are some 12,000 patients are spreading um, uh, territory wide. Now, we have to uh, jumpstart our system so that um, tests can be performed immediately. Now, the um, now President Xi um, has given us an instruction to mobilize every uh, all resources available. It really showcased the uh, pr the uh, philosophy of the uh, Communist Party. That is, uh, life of the people is the most important thing, and he cares about the life of the seven million population in Hong Kong. The chief executive, the civil service, and all everyone in Hong Kong understands that we are at a critical juncture. We have to do our best to implement and follow the direction offered by um, President Xi. Now, we have a, more than 5,000 preliminary cases each day. The testing capacity is only 100 to 200,000 uh, per day. Now, if you, if you do the math, um, it's not enough. For those who are isolating at home, there is simply no way to uh, restrict the movements of the patients. If you look at the number of confirmed cases every day, it has surpassed the uh, number back in 2020 um, at Wuhan. People are scared. One family member is infected, and then the entire family uh, uh, would be infected. So how we can adhere to the instruction offered by President Xi and control the epidemic here? These are my suggestions. Many people um, said to me that we should um, cancel the work from home arrangements for the civil service. We should mobilize everyone in the civil service to help. Now we have a 70 or rather 67,000 disciplined service um, officers. We should think about mobilizing them to the front line. A lot of work has to be done. Universal community testing um, is imminent, and we have to um, we have uh, restriction and testing operations, and we have to provide uh, support for those um, caught in a lockdown. And also, we have to exhaust every measure to boost the vaccination rate to uh, better protect against complications or fatality. For those who are not admitted to hospitals, or we should at least help uh, from private doctors as well as doctors uh, from the mainland to support the patients. First, we should start with uh, the private doctors. They can offer uh, online consultation and triage and then um, volunteer teams are formed uh, by healthcare workers and social workers can offer um, support. Patients confirmed should be removed from home as soon as possible. And we have to drastically uh, enhance our testing and isolating capacity. Once cases are identified, we have to isolate them and treat them as soon as possible. 
at a local level, we should uh, re requisition all um, public housing estates. For example, those in uh, Twin Moon, there are some 9,000 units um, available. And also, uh, the government is working with the um, hotel sectors to uh, rent their uh, rooms. And also, um, uh, cruise, cruises and uh, holiday camps. We should build more makeshift isolation facilities, uh, like uh, the Pen not like those in Penny Bay and uh, Huashan Shan, and also requisition um, public housing estates, uh, which uh, where uh, residents have not moved in yet. We have to have these facilities. Otherwise, no matter how much you boost your testing capacities, you cannot remove um, the uh, confirmed patients from their home. So supporting facilities are important, as well as um, boosting testing capacities. 150 to 300,000 uh, tests per day is not enough. We should call for help from the Guangdong uh, province to set up testing stations and mobile testing points uh, across the territory. Now, with all these uh, facilities and after universal community testing is performed, we have to t we have to take a drastic measure. That is, depending on the seriousness of the epidemic. Maybe we should offer uh, free rounds uh, of tests in two days uh, to all 18 districts. Well, on the 21st of June in Guangzhou, um, in Shenzhen, uh, they have done that. And all the Volunteers, um, organizations, and social workers uh, in Hong Kong should uh, should contribute in restriction and testing uh, operations and support uh, those who are in lockdown. On the early identification, isolation, and treatment principle, we have to adhere to this strategy so as to win the battle. And also, we have to ensure the daily supply of fresh uh, vegetables. This is not something to be trivialized. This really affects the mood of um, women at home. They are the pillars of our families. Or maybe the THB or the um, Security Bureau uh, can consider sea routes and um, ports to uh, ramp up the uh, uh, the delivery capacity of fresh produce. And also, we may consider um, deploying at the high-speed rail to uh, deliver supplies. This will surely help to uh, calm the nerves of Hong Kongers. Now, we surely don't want to see another wave. The government has to be resolute and implement Real name registration uh, for Leave Home Safe app, as well as uh, add the tracking function for uh, Leave Home Safe and the Hong Kong Health Code to boost our tracking ability. Now, there are only 100 offices as the uh, tr uh, contact tracing office as the CHP. Or when we have hundreds of cases every day, uh, they simply cannot catch up. Some Legislative Council members have suggested that we can learn from the uh, mainland's health code and uh, use this as a blueprint. Now, with the support of the central authorities and the various um, uh, mainland departments and commissions, um, then we have to all be mobilized. Uh, that includes members of this council and uh, everybody. And then, then together we uh, will work together to make sure that we put people's lives first. And then I'm sure then uh, we will be able to control the epidemic. And 
avoid um, the tragedies we see. Um, that is, um, say, the recent death cases of a three-year-old and a hundred-year-old. So we don't want to see any more of that. So I speak. Mr. Chen Pui Lang. Madam Deputy, on the 23rd of January 2020, we had the first imported COVID case. It's been two years since. Here, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the frontline healthcare workers, uh, staff collecting testing samples, uh, cleansing, cleaning workers, and security guards. Um, I would like to thank you, them for their hard work and contribution to the fight against the epidemic. I would also like to thank the public for their understanding and patience in uh, supporting the government's measures. I think the uh, government should uh, give com um, proper commendation to all the frontline staff uh, and uh, keep up their morale. Now, we are in a severe epidemic now. Some time ago, there was a discussion uh, or debate on whether we should go for dynamic zero infection or living with COVID. Now we can see that living COVID is not um, po possible. Given the rate of transmission and the population of the disease and the, uh, population density, we also have to consider uh, the aging population and the capacity of a healthcare system. If we have too many cases, the healthcare system will collapse, then um, the, uh, the um, spread of the disease will spin out of control. So things have not been working well in the past uh, few days. Uh, infected persons cannot be hospitalized. They stay at home and infect their family members. As for elderly and young children with serious condition, they uh, some have lost their lives because of COVID. So in the past month or two, we are back to square one in our fight against epidemic. At this juncture, I would like to thank the central authorities for um, giving a hand again to Hong Kong. They are providing us with resources and manpower. Mainland has accrued a, a good body of experience. They may have sporadic um, con infection cases, but then they would um, proceed to um, massive testing, and they are able to um, achieve zero infection again. This is was uh, achieved in big cities like Wuhan and other cities. So we should learn from the experience of the mainland in achieving zero infection. We could make the most of the resources provided by the mainland, and then we could uh, uh, put keep the put the uh, infection the epidemic under control. Now many members have put with very constructive suggestions on um, fighting the epidemic. I'm not going to repeat those points. I'm sure with the support of the central authorities and with uh, collaboration between experts on the mainland in Hong Kong, I'm sure we will be able to find the most effective solution to uh, f fight this epidemic. Now, I must stress that the governments also uh, have uh, uh, forward planning after we the the fifth wave of outbreak ends. The government must review all the loopholes in the, uh, their effort against uh, in fighting the epidemic. We should uh, learn from our experience. Now, uh, under the policy of preventing imported cases and local cases, there is a need for early identification of cases so that we could uh, swift act swiftly. And at the same time, there has to be effective treatment. And then there won't be um, transmission in the community. Uh, from our experience in fighting the virus in the past two years, we uh, could see that uh, there was a very there were various plans in place uh, to cope with a uh, various situation. But then, um, you know, with the fifth wave of outbreak, it started with a loophole in uh, about um, air cargo crew members. Um, now the whole society has to pay a heavy price. So that means with the prevention of uh, imported cases, we have not done a good job. Now, and also there are other loopholes, for example, the Leave Home Safe app does not have a real name registration system, and we're not making the most of um, technology and big data in, track, in tracing close contact. The government has to come up with a real name tracking system as soon as possible. While we need to mend the fences, it's never too late. And if we do not block the known loopholes, then uh, if we um, try, don't try, uh, then even if the fifth wave of outbreak comes in the end, uh, we can't guarantee there won't be a sixth wave or seventh wave. The SO government has to follow the instructions of President Xi Jinping. The uh, 
we should um, um, put make, uh, fighting the epidemic our very top priority, and then everyone must set about side uh, the differences and work together. Everyone, uh, every stakeholder must uh, continue to work in, in their own position and um, help in the fight of against the virus. So I speak, Mr. Dennis Lau. Thank you, Madam Deputy. First, I would like to thank all frontline workers fighting the epidemic. That includes civil servants, hospital authority, employees, all the voluntary groups, all frontline staff and technical staff. You know they deserve a tribute from the public for their contribution. The, there's this onslaught of the fifth wave of epidemic. After four waves of outbreak. Uh, we managed to come out of that. So this time, as long as we stand united and as long as we mobilize all necessary resources, we are able to bring this fifth wave to an end. The FTU has um, made an appeal on the 9th of February. We um, built a team of um, volunteers. Some 2,000 have joined us. So hopefully with this uh, volunteer team, we're able to help the government with this uh, manpower shortage. Civil servants also have various um, labor unions and associations. They all support the work of the government in fighting the epidemic, and they could all play a role. The government must not overlook their capacity. Civil servants are well-trained. They have um, strong team spirit and team work. So this, um, so in this um, emergency, they will work um, more, far more effectively than other groups. And then there are also fraternity groups and associations. Uh, they could also play a role here. Uh, you just need to make an appeal, and they will respond to that and um, chip in their effort. At the same time, there are many large um, companies uh, that have volunteer teams, and many in the teams are professionals with various uh, professional skills. So if they could also contribute as volunteers, it would be very useful. The FTU also has various uh, member associations uh, with volunteer teams. They uh, have been helping with our work, and they're also involved in public affairs. So the FTU is also all ready to join uh, in as a volunteer team. So the government needs not worry that we don't have enough manpower. As long as the government makes an appeal, I'm sure many group leaders will respond to the call, and um, their teams will join in the effort to fight epidemic. It's not cowardly to ask for help. It's only those who are brave who would ask for help. Now, the government has some uh, needs to uh, that has uh, tightened various um, social distancing measures. So as long as we have effective means to control the epidemic, then uh, that we'll, we'll be able to win in this battle. And that's the common wish of the people of Hong Kong. So with the support of the main authorities, the government should work with uh, civil servants as well as uh, voluntary groups in uh, voluntary teams in the community. I also appeal to the government, let's all support the government's work, and please join the, uh, the FTU's uh, volunteer team so we could uh, work together to fight the fifth wave of epidemic. Thank you. Mr. Lee Chan Kao. Thank you, Madam Deputy. The chief executive mentioned that uh, uh, Chinese medicine will be a focus of um, development in the healthcare system. There will be, uh, they will be building Chinese medicine hospital, and the uh, Chinese medicine development fund will be set up, and so on. I welcome all these measures. Now, apart from um, uh, Western medicine practitioners, Chinese medicine practitioners could also contribute to this fight against the epidemic. Now, um, some uh, ex mainland experts have um, pointed out. That uh, for um, patients with mild conditions staying at mixed hospital, we can administer Chinese medicine, and that is effective in preventing mild cases from deteriorating into serious cases. Now, um, from a study, 90% of patients in the, in Fang Chang hospitals in Wuhan took uh, Chinese medicine. Only two to five percent uh, of the patients' condition deteriorated, which is far lower than the percentage of uh, seven and thirteen um, from WHO data. Sorry, Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee, I think you have muted your microphone. Please unmute your microphone. 
Sorry, yes. So I would suggest that the SL government should um, include Chinese medicine in its overall scheme of things to fight the epidemic. It could also learn from the advanced experience of the mainland in using Chinese medicine to um, to control the, the uh, virus. So uh, we could consider collaboration between Chinese medicine, medicine or using medicine, Chinese medicine alone. In fact, um, there's already um, special Chinese um, medicine service, say at the AWE treatment facilities and some of the uh, clinics. Um, patients could um, join the Chinese program scheme for free. Uh, th that uh, that will help to relieve their symptoms. Some 700 uh, joined the schemes, and uh, it uh, is, uh, and then the their condition did uh, did uh, improve uh, after the administration of Chinese medicine. But unfortunately, where the scheme only was just started and then the government ended it. But then these are extraordinary times, we need extraordinary measures. So I hope the government will learn from this um, successful experience. They should ask the mainland to help Hong Kong to set up um, health care fac facilities as well as uh, treatment uh, options uh, using Chinese medicine. They should bring in experts from the mainland. So together with the Chinese medicine practitioner sector in Hong Kong, they could come up with effective treatment solutions. The government should also mobilize its existing system and uh, the capacity of the Chinese medicine practitioner sector. So to, and then uh, together, they could uh, deal with um, the surge in cases in the community. Now for some uh, suitable cases, say the asymptomatic patients or those with mild symptoms, then Chinese medicine could be used uh, to treat them. So this is to offer another choice to the public. Because now there are many who are not able to seek treatment, so um, we could address that. At the same time, uh, because uh, there is um, the the, uh, the Western medicine sector is overburdened, so it could offer some relief too. Now, some confirmed cases have to wait, stay at home for isolation. They don't get treatment. So with uh, current technology, we could make use of smart um, uh, treatment. So I would suggest um, remote um, med diagnosis with Chinese medicine. And then for um, serious condition, there could be administration of both Western and Chinese medicine. And then uh, there could be um, effective uh, central um, delivery system. And then medication could be sent to um, patients in, uh, staying in households, uh, staying at home. And then they could receive um, some treatment while they are isolating at home. So Presidency in has a reason instructions about a uh, on, on Hong Kong, it gave us a big booster in this fight against the pandemic. And uh, we begin to see hope in this fight against the pandemic. All civil servants and healthcare personnel and the discipline services uh, should unite and uh, stand uh, in solidarity with the support and care of the main. I'm sure will triumph uh, soon, uh, very soon. Thank you. Mr. Lam and Kwong. Thank you, Madam Deputy. The fifth uh, wave of outbreak is raging. We see an escalating number of confirmed cases day by day, and even uh, children are being infected. This is tremendous pressure on already tight manpower resources in the healthcare sector. I'd like to take this opportunity to commend all healthcare workers, as civil servants, and also discipline services and our volunteers, um, my deepest uh, respect. The latest uh, number of confirmed cases today is said to be over 4,000. Some patients are waiting at home, and because of the crowded conditions in Hong Kong, that will uh, lead to infections among the family. We must uh, crack down on the transmission chains as soon as possible. With the support of the central governments, we can learn from the experience of Wuhan and I'll follow the uh, instruction of President Xi. We must earnestly take the main responsibility and make it uh, the overriding priority to stabilize and control the epidemic as soon as possible. I have some suggestions for the government. We should uh, increase a temporary uh, isolation and treatment facilities uh, at the start of uh, the 
epidemic, there wasn't sufficient beds and doctors uh, to relieve uh, this pressure. Wuhan uh, started triaging, and then there was public and private sector participation to admit patients, and makeshift hospitals uh, were built to uh, treat patients. At this uh, critical juncture, the government should mobilize all possible resources and mobilize uh, private hospitals. There can be division of labor between the public and private sector, and private GPs can also treat patients. And um, uh, less serious cases or asymptomatic cases can be uh, dealt with uh, by the uh, private sector. And uh, we can also uh, start uh, makeshift hospitals in uh, sports stadium and uh, football pitches. We have many public facilities such as indoor games halls, performance uh, venues, and uh, the cruise terminal and the WKCD closed. Rather than leaving them idle, the administration consider uh, turning them into isolation centers like uh, makeshift hospitals in the mainland to lower the risk of infection among families. Now, I urge the administration to uh, accept preliminary uh, positive uh, cases and allow them to uh, report to the authorities online or by telephone so that the administration can have a better idea of the total number of confirmed cases in the community to take contingency measures. Whether the result is from an RAT kit or a nuclear exit test, uh, confirmed cases can uh, be arranged uh, to be put under isolation as soon as possible. The central authorities and also uh, cities and provinces on the mainland have been successful in uh, having zero, dynamic zero infection. This is because they have established a good uh, structure in fighting the pandemic. Now, recently, uh, we are short of uh, testing samples and we don't have enough RAT kits. As a result, people have been queuing up to buy them and some. And there are also speculation hoarding. Now patients are waiting to be admitted. All these demonstrate that in terms of decision making and coordination, there are shortcomings within the administration. I hope that the administration can set up an efficient high level commanding structure to lead government departments in this fight so that all policy bureaus, departments, hospital authority, and public and private organizations can be coordinated and mobilized to enhance our fight against the epidemic. And we should take all necessary measures to ensure the uh, lives and health of Hong Kong people. The CS4A led a team to Shamchan to put our requests to the central authorities, and all requests have been accepted in principle by the central authorities. The next step is for the administration to consider how to streamline and uh, rationalize the various arrangements to give effect to presidency's instruction, which uh, demonstrates the central authorities' concern for Hong Kong. And uh, the um, I think uh, it's not just uh, the government. I'm sure all legislators, the civil service, and uh, private sector, the private sector, should uh, unite and come up with good suggestions to um, assure the people of Hong Kong so that we can have social stability. We are in dire situation. I urge everyone to accept the government's appeal to be vaccinated as soon as possible, try to stay home and reduce our social gatherings. You should not uh, lower uh, your guards and add to the burden of our health care workers. With the government as our strong support with uh, the support of the whole nation, I'm sure we can uh, emerge from the epidemic. Thank you. Dr. Wang Yuan Shan. Madam Deputy, uh, the presidency had uh, 
made very um, important instructions uh, to Hong Kong and uh, has said that we must uh, mobilize all forces and resources and take all necessary measures to protect Hong Kong people's lives and health and to ensure Hong Kong's social stability. I'm sure that um, with um, the commitment on the part of the government, I'm sure we'll see a major improvement in terms of testing, isolation and treatment for capabilities. With the staunch support of the government and our support from everyone in the nation, I'm sure we will uh, bear fruits very soon. Uh, the National Health Commission and uh, Hong Kong as our government and also uh, Guangdong Province and Shamjian Municipal Government have set up a coordinating mechanism to help stabilize the epidemic situation in Hong Kong. I urge the administration to uh, do a proper coordination job under the current mechanism. We must have experts to interface with many experts to do a good job in prevention. And then the administration should have good high level coordination and we should mobilize all civil servants. The government should mobilize the whole community, encourage the private sector and the business sector uh, to chip in and uh, publicize and explain the policies to everyone so we can enhance the effectiveness of these measures so that we can have an all-out war against the war. Now, I have a few suggestions. Many vaccination centers, mainly for children, are fully booked. That is not desirable. There must be triage. There should be more private clinics to provide jabs to children and other designated groups. And we must, uh, there is a greater and greater demand for RAT kits. It is uh, difficult for members of the public to buy them, and they are not affordable. The government should stabilize the supply and prices of RAT kits and uh, distribute already procured kits to uh, people as soon as possible. The government should ensure treatment and um, capacity. We should use uh, Chinese and uh, Western medicine uh, cooperation for treating of patients. The government uh, should enhance the uh, defense uh, among uh, the risky groups, and we must enhance vaccination rates for LCHEs. Now, some other uh, chronically ill patients cannot attend follow-up consultations because hospitals are just overwhelmed. So we can uh, mobilize uh, resources in the private sector and procure services from them. I understand that uh, when a number of cases are rising, members will, of the public will panic and feel anxious, and uh, different industries and sectors are also uh, dealt a blow by the epidemic. I appeal to everyone to cooperate with the government we uh, should uh, demonstrate solidarity and help to stabilize the epidemic. We are confident. I'm sure that we can emerge from the epidemic and uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Mr. Jimmy, mm, thank you. Madam Deputy, we've just had the Valentine's Day and also uh, the Chinese Valentine's Day yesterday. As many people, uh, as uh, the traditional saying goes, uh, the Chinese New Year period is only over when we've passed the 15th day of the New Year. Now, this is not a difficult, not an easy year for everyone. Uh, we face the stiff challenges brought about by COVID-19. And so we cannot afford to lower our guards. We must stay vigilant and uh, fight the epidemic together. Now, this motion is a motion of thanks for the CE's policy address 2021. Under the leadership of the CE, the government has been dedicated and committed in fighting the epidemic, and the results are uh, remarkable. But we have the staunch support of the uh, 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 of the country, and uh, we were able to overcome one challenge after another. Recently, the central authorities have 
in principle accepted our requests for help, including sending epidemiological experts uh, for, to come out uh, to do uh, analysis and also investigations to provide RAT kits, to provide uh, beds, furniture, and isolation and treatment facilities, and masks, etc. Uh, the government will ensure that uh, there will be stable supply of fresh food, vegetables, and daily necessities to Hong Kong. Because uh, the epidemic is raging, we need the central authorities as our support. So uh, the central authorities have agreed to set up task forces that uh, is conducive to deployment of manpower across the boundary. We're grateful to the central government for its um, and relented support to Hong Kong in times of difficulties. I think this is a booster to our confidence. So when uh, we are anxious, we feel uh, stabilized and assured now. Five task forces uh, will be set up, and the C has arranged uh, for five policy uh, directors to head these task forces. This is really commendable. and. A great thank you to all frontline workers who have us uh, stood firm to fight the epidemic. They have uh, never uh, sat back uh, in face of the challenges. So every citizen in Hong Kong should uh, think for himself what he can do to help to ease this epidemic. Well, at first uh, there were rumors and uh, people were trying to uh, monger, scare and uh, disseminate fake news. And uh, that has uh, caused misunderstandings and uh, people uh, become puzzled and that has uh, offset the government's efforts in public education publicity. For these unscrupulous, unscrupulous elements, they're trying to cause chaos. They should be uh, really uh, be taken to task. We've always asked the administration to set up uh, legislation to crack down on fake news. We're pleased to see that finally uh, the legislative work can be completed within this year. I mean, uh, there will be recommendations for the government to consider. Well, the government's anti epidemic team should be uh, prudent in their acts and speak word, remarks. We need the officials to walk the talk, and we also need to make authoritative statements to reduce misconception and inconsistency. Like President Xi said that uh, he assumed the driver's seats at a very early stage. I hope that the government can work as one team and one voice and listen to the commander. We should remember our mission. And well, as soon as the epidemic is in place, the end reopening of the border and any economic rejuvenation were all wishful thinking. That whole society is spending so much resources to uh, achieve dynamic zero infection with the goal of eliminating the virus. As soon as the whole population can work with the government in a scientific manner, in the not too distant future, we can defeat the virus. And instead of caring about the daily new cases and where we do lockdown or any new epidemic measures, for this motion of things, even though this debate is held on February 2022, we're actually debating the 2021 October policy address, which was four months away, which is a record in itself. Uh, on the last year's uh, PA debate on January, I described that the PA is well tortured, and this is no exception. In just one month or 20 seconds to improving the electric system of Hong Kong and to the third reading, and last year we managed to re uh, return a new term of LegCo. This was just good news on a roll. This belated motion of thanks not just a good news, but actually a good thing. This term LegCo has 90 members. We shall take this opportunity to review the fifth policy address and strategize together for a better future. This motion of thanks carried the characteristics of being so close to the new budget by the financial secretary a week away. Since the 
COVID-19 is still raging and all the industries are in deep water. For the electrical members and the public, their focus was on all the relief measures. The budget should work in sync with the policy address and the Chief Executive should direct the Financial Secretary to respond to public aspirations. We need to uh, be precise in poverty alleviation, and for those industry in distress, we need to offer them timely relief. How could economic outlook biggest uncertainty? If this the fifth wave can control up to two or three months, the local consumption and investment sh will be much cooled out. Therefore, um, me and the HKCMA hope that incoming budget can launch consumption voucher 2.0 and exploring uh, targeted consumption vouchers to help specific industries. So long as the epidemic is still raging, all this are just vain talk. We must put our hearts together to fight the epidemic. However, that doesn't mean that we should rest on our hands and just talking about the epidemic, but not talk about the future vision. And we have to be prepared for the economic Rejuvenation. This policy address is far reaching and aggressive. Not only offers solution to uh, transport and housing issues, and as well as enhancing our international competitiveness and integrated our overall national overall development, which will help the Hong Kong to seize our advantages and open up new skies. This is the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong unification to China. Now that we are back on the right track of one country, two system, and society is back to peace and order, we need to restart. And this year, policy address is stressed on the future and seizing opportunities, and come up with a series of solutions that can address deep rooted problems and demonstrating the government uh, perseverance. As the industry representative in Lechka, I must ex express thanks to the government that the government will continue to uh, uh, work on the various production factors to promote reindustrialization so, so that we can have a complete value chain and diversify our economy. After uh, multi years of lobbying, the government recently paid more focus to reindustrialization, demonstrating its potential. Then all sectors are no longer unfamiliar with reindustrialization. At the start, there may be some misunderstanding, and eventually uh, we all get to know the essence of reindustrialization. Most importantly, there is actually a more favorite environment for this to happen. I thought I could say reindustrialization, not only about the industrial sector, but also the top priority for the society. The CE also adopted our suggestions and plan to rename the ITB as uh, innovation Technology Industrialization Bureau and come to a uh, plan for the second advanced manufacturing center. Besides being the international INT hub under the 14th of year plan, uh, and also we need to uh, uh, unleash advantages in manufacturing industries for innovation and research. At present, even though uh, Hong Kong has a shortage of land and um, labor. In terms of research and innovation and creativity, Hong Kong is the leader in this front, especially in the Northern Metropolis strategy outlined in the PA. Not only can provide industrial land for the reindustrialization and also help for the mutual collaboration of Hong Kong and Sunjun in technology and uh, in the economy and help to uh, make turn Hong Kong into an Hong I international IT hub. Recently, to combat climate change to achieve carbon neutrality is a global common task. In this policy address, the CE stated that Hong Kong should try to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 and try to uh, uh, enhance its um, interim goal so that by 2030 our carbon emissions uh, will be half of 2005 levels and. Mrs. Carrie Lam have chaired the steering committee on carbon emissions and decarbonization to supervise the industry actions. For industrialization, 
we should adopt a path of uh, low carbon and green technology. Hope that the government takes the lead to work with industry, so that we can driven by the INT to lead to a uh, transition to low carbon and embrace the new limestone opportunities for industrialization. I support this motion of thanks. Mr. Benson, look. Can you see me? Please start. The fifth wave is more rigorous than the previous one. The presidency has issued important instructions in claiming that the funding epidemic is the overriding priority. First, I would like to thank the country for their unwavering support of Hong Kong. I take this opportunity to express gratitude to the frontline express workers, volunteers, and disciplinary forces, and various organizations. They demonstrated uh, the spirit of mobilizing all forces and resources that could be mobilized. And also, I want to thank those who cooperate with the uh, anti-epidemic measures. If everyone take an extra step, we can defeat the virus. This fifth wave is quite critical. We've seen that community testing centers and the vaccination centers have plenty of people lining up outside. The health care system is prone to collapse, and it's reported that over 4,000 confirmed cases. The epidemic greatly disrupted our livelihood. Well, to buy some vegetables, the people have to rummaging around. Well, there's hardly anything left on the supermarket shelves. At this a crisis, we need to put the people first. And last week, the ACL government met with the mainland officials for the uh, thematic COVID-19 meeting and had the support of the mainland and the Sunshine government that will work to fight the epidemic and ensuring supplies to Hong Kong. Vegetables and fresh produce supplies are the cornerstone of livelihood. The central government's support can definitely help to stabilize our prices and thus our livelihood. Scientifically, the virus is evolving quickly, and public decision making must be racing against the curve. We have to keep calm. This is now the war time, and we have to keep our cool. One to focus that the government must need to enhance their war fighting capability and Hunter needs to resist those who attempt to disrupt. We need to stabilize the economy and we need to give the public an correct understanding of our strategy before uh, bringing the public on board to achieve dynamic zero cases. Some resident people complain to me, why do you need to uh, uh, buy for supplies? They are afraid of the citywide lockdown. Well, for this kind of unverified rumors, the government should clarify it right away. From public administration perspective, we need to produce a more coherent narrative to outline our measures to avoid misunderstanding. And also hope that the government and to let the public to remind the meaning of dynamic zero infections. According to National Health Infection uh, Task Force member, that at it actually means that any reporting of local cases, we should quickly stamp out the cases. This is not lying flat, but actually contain and cut off the transmission. At the same time, we hope that the government can timely and dynamically uh, to uh, talk about the progress of the five task force just formed. I believe when the people can actually understand the goals and the objectives, implications, of our strategy, they are willing to act within the government's interests. Another uh, move I wish to mention, for example, to explain to the public, uh, compared to uh, the difference uh, strategy in those with mild symptoms and those with severe incomes. I agree with HA to activate seven dedicated clinics so that the mild cases to seek consultation this can uh, charge uh, cases and reduce the pressure on the a &E departments. President, uh, finally, I hope that the government can continue 
uh, well, a better job cooperating with the mainland authorities and different sectors. I know that the government is working hard, for example, working with the business sector and different organizations and identify the suitable community treatment facilities and mobilize the volunteers to enhance our capabilities. The BPA are now engaged in the business and the youth by sending the supplies to the families in need. And we hope that the government can quickly distribute the RET packs to every citizen so that they can feel that the government's effort in front of the epidemic. With the strong backing and assistance of our country, we can have a stronger capability. We shouldn't be uh, criticizing and whining to judge a cheap dynamic serial infection to uh, save off the epidemic. I so submit. Mr. Chao Siu Chung. President, this swift wave has led to a dozen or so uh, deaths involving uh, children and the elderly. During this period, I received uh, the complaints from different sectors of the community. Some were affected by the epidemic and their livelihood were destroyed, and some were living in the lockdown buildings and worried they would be infected sooner or later. And some have family members infected and ho worried that they were spilled on the whole family. For the past three months, the Omicron spun out of control around the world. Since last November till present, there are over 1.3 million confirmed and half a million deaths due to Omicron. This Omicron should not be underestimated. Well, at this critical moment, I steadily support the government uh, uh, dynamic zero cases strategy to protect the public safety. I'm grateful for the central government support for Hong Kong in combating the epidemic. President Xi's outlined the three alls and two unsures for uh, expert instruction to support Hong Kong construction of the isolation facilities, enhance our testing capabilities to ensure our medical supplies and uh, fresh produce. Hong Kong is given all-round support from the central government. Timely support uh, demonstrated uh, Hong Kong's uh, close link to the mainland and demonstrated under one country, two system the central government's care concern of the government. During the past two years, for those who are fighting at the front line, they've been working very hard uh, to fight the pandemic, and uh, their performance has been outstanding, including the healthcare professionals, uh, the uh, police, the um, ambulance team, the um, allied services, um, and also the testing staff, and also for those uh, working at the front line to support the um, mandatory testing, I'd like to salute to them for their contribution. Yes, um, during the past two years, the administration's uh, performance in fighting the pandemic uh, has left something to be desired. Still, we should recognize the efforts that they have put in. And both myself and my friends from the trade union have been contacting our trade union members and also our friends in the community. I've been encouraging them that uh, we should uh, maintain our confidence and we should not lie flat. We should uh, take the initiative to tie in with government's efforts in fighting the pandemic. On the other hand, I'd also like to call upon the government to listen to the community's voices in order to improve on the uh, initiative to fight the pandemic in order to um, cause less inconvenience to the public. We should also be listening to the community's voices. The administration must understand that uh, despite the fact that we might have to spend more money on this, it's going to relieve the public so that uh, the hardship can be eased. So we have to work together so that the government and the community will have to work together in order to overcome the pandemic and then we'll be able to ride out of this. These are my remarks. Next, uh, Mr. 
can it slow? Um, Mr. President, I speak uh, in support of the um, policy address. Um, well, with the uh, double protection of uh, one country, two systems, um, and also the improved uh, election uh, system, Hong Kong has managed to get back on the right track, and uh, we sh are now able to focus on uh, what needs to be done. And in the policy address, there have been a lot of uh, breakthroughs um, in terms of promoting the development of um, Hong Kong, including the expansion of the North uh, Metropolis uh, District, and uh, we can also create more jobs, and uh, there would be uh, more land supply in order to promote the development of Hong Kong. We would also be working in line with the 14 five-year plan, and there are also territory-wide initiatives. So there are a lot of development opportunities, and uh, that would also um, instill more uh, dy dynamism into the community, and therefore, the Hyungi Cook would like to uh, express our support uh, for this, and would like to acknowledge the success of it. Uh, this is dif a difficult time, and therefore, Hyungi Cook is um, all out uh, in support of the government in fighting the pandemic, because uh, this is the fifth wave, and this is the most um, severe situation that we are facing. We are talking about our uh, Omicron, which is uh, highly infectious, and the number of um, confirmed cases uh, has been growing exponentially. And both the mobile testing stations and also the testing centers uh, are filled to the brink, and many people have to queue up um, in the cold weather for testing. I think this is um, um, far from desirable. And um, indeed, uh, we can see that um, all the facilities uh, are already saturated and many are stuck in the community. And for the tracking work done by the administration, we are still lagging behind. And uh, the administration has already mobilized uh, the entire civil service uh, in order to fight the uh, pandemic. Yet in terms of tracking, tracing, there is still a shortage of resources and therefore in different areas. So we have bottlenecks. This is indisputable. And therefore, we have to seek the support of uh, the state authorities. This is um, a critical time, and this is uh, the crux of the whole thing. And therefore, this uh, situation has also been very close to the minds of uh, uh, presidency and uh, he has given instructions and uh, he has also asked uh, uh, the deputy president, Mr. Uh, Han Zheng, to um, show his concern for Hong Kong people. And uh, he has asked uh, the um, Hong Kong SAR government to uh, make sure that uh, they would uh, adopt an all-out approach uh, in fighting the pandemic so that uh, we'd be uh, trying our best uh, to mobilize all forces um, to fight the pandemic. And all necessary measures will also be taken to protect Hong Kong people's lives and health, as well as ensuring Hong Kong's uh, social stability. So Hong Yi Kok uh, is really grateful to President Xi and also the central people's government for their support uh, for Hong Kong. On top of that, uh, Hong Kong people will also have to put our minds together so that we'd be able to overcome the fifth wave of uh, the pandemic together. And a couple of days ago, uh, the SAR government has already raised um, or um, made this uh, request to the central authorities, and they are very supportive. And uh, both the central authorities and the Guangdong provincial government have uh, agreed to set up uh, five uh, task forces, in including the experts and also the investigation teams and also the uh, um, the health facilities uh, protection task force and so on, in order to ensure that Hong Kong will be able to detect early and treat early all those uh, confirmed cases, so that would be able to achieve the objective of dyma dynamically, dynamically achieving this uh, zero infection policy. And uh, the administration um, and also the central authorities have have also given us this. Um, um, boost of confidence uh, so that we will be able to do this uh, with the support of the central authorities. Um, we can mobilize the resources from the central authorities, and that would also help ease the bottleneck that we are experiencing right now, including the testing facilities. Uh, those will be greatly boosted, and then we'll be able to increase the number of uh, 
test and also the uh, staff to take the uh, specimens and so on. And also, we have also been using the um, automatic uh, dis uh, distribution machines, and that would also help um, ease the crowds and uh, reduce the number of people that have to queue up. And uh, more vaccination centers will also be set up. For example, some of the LCSD facilities will also be reopened. For example, cinemas and also performance venues can also be converted into vaccination centers in order to enhance or increase the vaccination rate. The administration should also tell the public, in particular for RCHEs, um, elders, uh, rapid test uh, kits should also be distributed so that we can have um, a multi-pronged approach in tackling the problem. And then we'll be able to find out the source of infection, and then we'll be able to cut off the infection chain. We would also like the government uh, to attach importance uh, to the uh, needs of uh, the rural areas so that uh, testing or mobile testing stations uh, and also test kits can also be distributed uh, to the uh, um, villagers uh, via the mobile testing stations. And a couple of days ago, the CE also announced uh, that isolation facilities will be set up and improvements will be made, including Queen's uh, Hill and also Liking Estates. Uh, newly uh, completed housing estates would also be used um, for quarantine purposes. And uh, hostels of uh, universities and students' uh, dormitories would also be used. Uh, and for taxis, uh, there will be um, dedicated uh, taxis to take the confirmed or the uh, preliminary positive um, patients to the uh, clinics and hospitals for treatment. So it means that the administration is not sitting back and doing nothing. In fact, uh, instead of uh, adopting a very passive attitude, the administration has been very proactive um, in protecting the um, life and health of uh, Hong Kong people. And therefore, we should give our full support to the SAR government. We should not uh, just uh, surrender to this pandemic. I'd like to fully recognize the contribution made by those at the front line, including the civil servants, uh, the healthcare professionals, the cleaners, the janitors, and also the security staff, and so on. They are all heroes. And uh, the current work has now reached a critical stage, and therefore, uh, the Hungi Kok and uh, all the villages will be working together with the SR government, and we fully believe that um, with the strong support from the central people's government, the SR government will definitely be uh, leading us uh, in winning this uh, battle. We'll be able to clear all the cases. We will achieve uh, zero infection. Now I'd like to turn to the rural de development and also Hong Kong's uh, transport planning. Given the current um, economic situation, if we were to um, see the uh, glory days again, then we will have to um, uh, develop uh, with GBA, and uh, we will have to seize the opportunity. So the critical thing is about uh, how we can expand the northern metropole's development. And therefore, I believe that developing the no northern part of the new territories uh, in terms of uh, land development and uh, other developments, uh, we need to have a very detailed population policy and also transport infrastructure and also the facilities that would be needed uh, by um, an increased um, population. and. Um, we are going to have um, a northern net metropole of some 30,000 um, hectares. And uh, that would also be able to house some uh, 2.5 million people. And if you look at uh, the current metropole, in fact, um, we only have about uh, less than a million. And uh, that would be more than doubled. So I'm happy to see that uh, the administration is prepared to adopt a new mindset in developing the uh, uh, the bound the boundary area, and uh, there will be a merge, um, uh, a merge development of the the urban and uh, the suburban area, and um, the uh, NT North uh, would also be turned into um, a place where people can live and uh, uh, have recreation. So that would also um, be um, a part of seizing the opportunities under the fourteen five year plan, and uh, the proposal has uh, currently been initially approved, and the administration must come up with a timetable and also the financial details so that uh, we will also have to plan the transport network and also big hospitals, uh, schools, and also all the facilities uh, that would uh, be needed uh, by the larger communities can also be built. And also, uh, land out tomorrow would also have to be carried out uh, because with these plans, uh, underway that would also um, comprehensively improve Hong Kong's uh, planning. 
enter the North Metropole and also the uh, Land Out Tomorrow plan would mean that uh, for those uh, who used to be remotely located, uh, they would be undergoing very rapid changes. And uh, well, we would also have to think about uh, the housing needs and also for people who have to commute on a daily basis. Uh, we would have to ensure that um, facilities will be improved um, in tandem in order to meet those needs. And uh, there are five uh, railway projects in order to cover both uh, the industry and also the cross-boundary uh, lines. And uh, that would also respond to the uh, requests uh, from the Hong Yi Kok so that uh, the transport facilities will not be lagging behind uh, other uh, urban developments. And uh, with these, uh, that would also be part and parcel of the anti-Northwest uh, development and uh, we will also be able to see a rapid growth in the population and with the infrastructure facilities uh, commissioning if um, they are not able to be commissioned uh, in tandem then that would greatly reduce the attra attractiveness of those projects and uh, there are some railway projects whether it's the uh, express rail or the uh, south hong kong island or south island line and also the um, the cross harbor line of the east rail there have been uh, prolonged delays, and therefore we will have to complete those projects as soon as possible. And if we were to take on new projects, it would be even more difficult. And therefore, I think uh, we should uh, adopt uh, the approach that uh, infrastructure should be in place before the intake of population. And therefore, we would expect that uh, by 2026, uh, some of the um, the Kutong Station would be completed. So even if Kutong Station can be commissioned in 2027, then uh, during the first year of population intake, they will still have to rely heavily on existing road network. And then for the trunk road uh, in North, uh, Northern New Territories, for example, Tolo Harbour Highway is already very congested and therefore residents uh, have experienced a lot of difficulty when they go out. And therefore, in planning, we will have to adopt a microscopic uh, approach in conducting studies in order to help solve some of the root problems that the new territories have been experiencing. And we've been saying that uh, for the northern link, uh, that would also have to move southward so that it can become a north-south corridor that would help ease the pressure on anti-northwest uh, um, and also under the 2030-plus um, the uh, technology corridor and so on, and also the IT um, song can also be further boosted and a better synergy effect can also be achieved. We would expect that uh, we will need to de develop very substantially so that uh, our IT sector can be boosted uh, and uh, we will therefore need to increase uh, people flow, uh, capital flow and also data flow in order to promote the Shenzhen Hong Kong um, integration and collaboration so that Hong Kong's economy can also undergo transformation. And I'm also concerned about our land house uh, transport planning. Our international airport and uh, the uh, Hong Kong Joint Macau Bridge are located in uh, uh, just uh, off uh, land Tau. It's the very important transport hub for the development of the uh, territory and also the Greater Bay Area. Therefore, we have to do it environmentally friendly because uh, in Mui War there are residents. Therefore, it's a very it's a very unique community. So in developing the land tower, we should not exclude them. Otherwise, uh, the, the very valuable land there will be wasted. Actually, Mui War is between the. Uh, Artificial Island and uh, the North Lantau Expressway. So, if we make use of the land for a, a coastal expressway, it will improve the transport a lot. In the future, uh, we need to have the necessary transport uh, infrastructure to support the two uh, DBAs, uh, both in the north and in the south. Mr. President, the epidemic is uh, in a se severe stage with the virus spreading in the community widely. And therefore, this is also a test on the uh, go governance per capacity of uh, the SAL government. But of course, uh, I'm confident that we'll be able to emerge 
from the epidemic very soon uh, with the capable leadership of the government and the country support. And we can fulfill our role in the development of the Greater Bay Area and we would be able to live up to people's uh, aspirations for a better Hong Kong. Ms. Judy Chan, Mr. President, first of all, I would like to thank the SAL government for the efforts expanded in fighting the epidemic and I also want to thank every frontline workers of dealing with the epidemic for Hong Kong. Actually, we are in the fifth wave, which is the most severe wave of the epidemic. And the country and the central government has been paying close attention to what we are doing, and they are very supportive. But the first uh, priority is to safeguard people's lives uh, and uh, maintain social st uh, stability. We must do our utmost to control the epidemic. This must be done at all costs. And our people have been uh, fighting the epidemic together with the government. I hope the government would uh, adopt a positive at attitude and to do away with the bureaucratic view and uh, is willing to take all necessary measures to think out of the box, mobilize all resources, and with the support of the central government, uh, we can uh, mobilize all social resources and uh, dispel all the unnecessary uh, rumors, and we can uh, live up to the uh, expectations and instructions all the, given by the president of the country. Everyone should be vigilant and do our part. Therefore, I have a few suggestions to make, which are matters of concern to the general public. I hope the government would listen to me careful, uh, patiently. First, in, recently we have seen many cases involving foreign domestic helpers and their employees and their family. And therefore, the health risks of the employers will be put at stake if a foreign domestic helper is uh, confirmed is con is confirmed with a with the infection therefore everyone in the family must be vigilant otherwise uh, we can easily create a cross family uh, transmission chain but because our labor law uh, Employer or foreign domestic helper cannot uh, offer uh, wages in lieu of uh, statutory holidays. What they can do is to advise the domestic helper not to go to crowded places. But we see a lot of uh, foreign domestic helper congregated in public places, and they would also uh, eat uh, and with their face masks uh, down. And if they go to private premises such as uh, hostels, they may have uh, 10 to 20 uh, domestic helpers there, and they will certainly not wear masks when they are in, in on such premises. If there's one um, confirmed case there, uh, it can this virus can easily be transmitted to and to others present, and therefore to their family employers. I understand that uh, the foreign domestic helper uh, would like to enjoy the one day off, weekly day off, since they are working away from ho their home country and it's not an easy job. Of course, uh, the government uh, has ordered certain uh, trades and industries to expand the business. But why, why can't we do the same and uh, ask the foreign domestic helpers to stay at home on their rest days so as to minimize the, yeah. the risks of uh, tr transmission. It will not be in conflict with the, the spirit behind the labor law. Uh, other, uh, and all, we can also uh, avoid a situation whereby uh, domestic helpers might be fined for breaching the uh, public health uh, restrictions. And foreign domestic helpers are considered by many employers as a part of their family. Therefore, the government should be flexible. Instead of uh, asking the employer to shoulder the relevant risk, the, 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 
the employer has no power to uh, ask their foreign domestic helper to act in certain way to reduce risk. So we must help the employer. The government must come forward to act. And also I want to talk about the uh, vaccination bubble arrangement. I am all for it. I have been vaccinated. M many p parents are concerned about the uh, risk their children are facing, and they would certainly like their children to uh, be vaccinated soon in order not to add to the uh, burden of vaccination uh, centers. Uh, I would like to call upon the Education Bureau to uh, use school premises while the classes are not conducted there so that we can have more vaccination facilities for children and uh, students to assure parents. Also, the government should help uh, pregnant women and uh, mother breastfeeding their babies. These uh, women have special needs. They should be given special uh, rights to decide whether they should be vaccinated or not. Vaccination is good in itself, but uh, different women or uh, new mothers uh, may have to consider different health considerations. It's, diff it's not easy to, to, to give birth and care for the babies. So I hope uh, the, the government should offer some uh, special consideration to these women, and they should be excluded from the mandatory requirements. And also, uh, it's been, the law has been amended so that uh, an employee who's been dismissed because of uh, his unwillingness to vaccine to get vaccinated would not be regarded as an illegal uh, dismissal. I hope the same arrangement can be offered to uh, pregnant women and uh, new mothers. And I hope the government can also do more in uh, offering vaccination services. Many people are concerned and worried because of this. Uh, progression of the uh, new wave, and there are some uh, misconception and misinformation. It's been said that uh, fifty-five percent of the confirmed cases now have or have received uh, two two jabs, but the government has not told people how many of these people are having mild symptoms or, or uh, asymptomatic. Many people now doubt whether vaccination is useful in preventing the infection. The government should uh, make to offer clearer information of this kind so as to prevent uh, the spread of uh, misinformation so that people uh, can be assured and remain calm in fighting the epidemic. Only by doing this can we uh, be uh, working together in this uh, effort. Mr. President, uh, if we stand together and cooperate, uh, we can certainly achieve the desired result. I hope the government can uh, consider all my suggestions. And with the support of the central government, the SAR government, in my view, we'll certainly be able to do a good job and we can uh, rise over this difficulty together, and we would be emerging from the uh, epidemic very soon. So I submit. Ms. Chan Hoi Yan. Thank you, President. Well, traditionally, um, in the motion of thanks debate, members can speak on different uh, policy issues, such as uh, housing and uh, nurturing young people. It's a very valuable uh, opportunity to us to offer comments. But the epidemic is uh, in a very severe stage. Uh, President Xi Jinping has uh, issued instructions to us, and therefore we should uh, expeditiously to do whatever it takes to control the epidemic as a matter of priority. Therefore, I will be speaking, using my speaking time mainly on this theme of emerging from the epidemic. So. 
I believe uh, the president has done the correct thing in uh, re reorganizing the order of the relevant themes so that we can uh, be, uh, live up to the uh, pace of public opinion. Well, things have taken a turn for the worse in the fifth wave of the epidemic. We have not been able to get ahead of the situation. As uh, I've, I said in the first Q&A, seize the question time. I said that there should be a more community-wide uh, test because uh, internationally, Omicron has caused a very serious uh, wave of epidemic. Our policy should be uh, progressive, and we should do something to prevent it instead of being reactive. So what can we do now? First, we need to be resolute and determined in achieving uh, the goal we desire. We have to go for zero uh, infection and dynamic clearance, although this may not seem attainable now, but we must be determined. Uh, as long as we are determined and we work hard, we can certainly achieve it. So I would like to uh, suggest some ways to go for early detection, early treatment, and early cure. Early detection will require testing. That is, in the past week, uh, the t uh, testing facilities are overcrowded with uh, people. With more and more people seeking testing, uh, the, the, these uh, facilities can could not cope, and uh, the uh, Center for Health Protection has admitted that uh, that their testing capacity is now uh, in in unable to cope with the work, work volume, and therefore, if uh, the tests uh, cannot be done in good time, it can be a, a, a risk, and also in uh, the Mao Shan uh, test center has been commissioned and we have been given uh, additional manpower by the uh, central government. How can we facilitate early detection by through such additional facilities? I hope uh, we can learn from the mainland and how they operate their testing facilities. The government should send people to different districts, to different buildings, and, and rank their, their risk so that Low, so low risk uh, areas that you can test uh, five samples or uh, even ten samples every time together. But of course, for higher risk uh, districts, uh, you have to test each and every every sample uh, separately. But for lower risk districts, we should make the best use of mixed uh, sample testing so as to detect uh, the transmission chains early, and only by doing this can we suppress the current wave. And also we have to go for early isolation and uh, quarantine. Once the uh, confirmed cases are detected, that they should be uh, isolated and put under quarantine so that uh, they will not infect other people. And now many uh, families have to stay with the their, their confirmed uh, family uh, members for a long time before they are removed to a quarantine center or to a treatment facility. And therefore, we should make use of hotels which can offer many a lot of rooms for us. Hope that uh, we can provide ten, more than 10,000 hotel rooms. After uh, securing the right hotels, we need to uh, retrofit these hotel rooms. And then uh, we need to prepare it, the list of quarantinees. I believe that um, the waiting list is very long for isolation facilities, which involve a lot of manpower. If necessary, I believe that me and my lecture colleagues are very happy to support this work and help to recruit volunteers to call uh, these people about the arrangements. The government is short on manpower. The civic community can help in order to fight the epidemic. And thirdly, early uh, diagnosis and early treatment. The serious bottleneck of happens that 
After confirmation, the patient may very long to be admitted. Besides affecting the treatment, there's a huge risk of infecting the family members and neighbors. I know that the HA and the healthcare personnel are trying their best, and they have just set up a new telephone hotline so that the patients can check on their own condition. And there are now seven dedicated COVID clinics for light uh, symptoms. Besides these dedicated clinics, the government will need to add more treatment and isolation beds. In Wuhan, they managed to build Huazhenshan Hospital in 10 days. If Hong Kong had the capability and the space, Hong Kong would make reference and build another makeshift hospital. I also suggest that in these extraordinary circumstances, we need to use extreme means. For example, uh, we can uh, make reference to the AWE, make use of the Hong Kong Coliseum and the uh, Elizabeth Stadium and even the HKCEC. It is something we ought to consider. And four, and my key point on vaccination, after mobilization and see that the civil service bear have been very active in promoting this according to the government statistics and Hong Kong had with those for minute one dose is at 984 percent putting aside the elderly and the children the vaccination rate is still too low that as the children vaccination program has just started unfortunately we lost two uh, children, one four and another three year old. They tested positive. Um, more recently, there are some uh, elderly deaths from COVID. Vaccination can reduce severe symptoms and prevent tragedies. That's the most reliable mean. If the public has dealt on the side effects and the uh, benefits of the vaccine, please consult your family doctor. The virus is does discriminate. They don't pick on the children and they don't spare the elderly and the children. Please don't give up the chance to protect yourself and the others and protect Hong Kong. Currently, age, the age between 3 to 11 the vaccination rate is below 8%. Previously, uh, those under 12 are ineligible. Now that we allow vaccination over three year old for 7 to 79 and the 80 plus seniors, these two demographics vaccination is only 68.6 and 39.4%. Excluding the doubts on the vaccination protection, the epidemic is getting severe. A lot of the elderly and the children would like to get vaccinated. A lot of the vaccination centers or clinics uh, are full and couldn't accept any appointments. I understand that the healthcare staff and the community halls are uh, are converted into testing centers. Therefore, I have the following to suggest to government, which to make use of the outreach teams and and also a, a, a private doctors and nurses willing to help and they are willing to volunteer after retirement. We should provide one-stop service to vaccinate the elderly at residential homes. We should need to have more outreach teams to go door to door to vaccinate the elderly residents so they don't need to visit these vaccination centers and risk being infected going back and forth. And it's also the most convenient way for them, and they would be very willing to do so. And second, the mobile vaccination vehicles. Well, I proposed in the previous four ways, and the government had deployed them, but so far there are just only two. Well, for these effective measures, the government should put in more resources to it, especially uh, you not allow vaccination above three. Previously, the EDB proposed school outreach program. However, well, these are good ideas. However, uh, before this was implemented, the classes are suspended. Therefore, we should make use of um, vaccination vehicles. Where we can find the vehicles? Well, uh, the uh, tourist coaches can be used. Besides bringing income to them, after retrofitting, the capacity can accommodate a lot of equipment. While introducing more vaccination vehicles, the government can consider the following promotion strategy. 
besides being uh, flexible, these vehicles are only good uh, outdoor display at what well, some may be hesitant or could make an appointment. However, we can see a vaccination vehicle parking next to your neighborhood, you will want to take a jab right away. Then you may ask, uh, why do we know that there will be a vehicle around? Besides issuing press releases uh, announcing their whereabouts, we can come up with some innovative ways. Well, we can um, just like an ice cream vehicle by playing music. When we hear the jingle, that will we know that the vaccination vehicle around. Now that you hear the jingle, then you will, and you saw the vehicle, then you can attract people's attention and urge the administration to consider. And when the children hear music, they are much more relaxed and they will feel less chance about getting injected. And third, on theaters, I have another breakthrough idea. I was thinking, is there any way they can help the hard hit industries? I boldly suggested of using theaters. I saw there are some theater closures recently. Well, they are big and they're very cushy seats. seats. Well, the box office can be turned into a registration desk and the various screening rooms can be turned into vaccination rooms. And after vaccination, there are enough seating for the vaccinated to get rest. And when they leave, they can get free popcorn at the refreshment kiosk. I believe that they was will make the children less afraid of vaccination, even may enjoy it. For the elderly, you can consider uh, giving them free canned food. Well, these are my both suggestions, and the government can adjust the details and the feasibility. To achieve the following mesh, the above mesh measures to achieve adaptation, early treatment, and universal vaccination, bring up another problem. Where do we have the manpower? Would you tap into the different medical professionals and allied health professionals. We need to make use of these professionals. Take Chinese medicine practitioners, for example, we can tap into the community CMs and the TCM students and need to go under internships. Can we make use of them? These are very good placement opportunities. For example, the vaccination vehicles, we can have some a veteran nurse and the pharmacists to help the vaccination. The TCM students can learn working with different professions while alleviating manpower shortage. I urge the government to consider. And finally, we take this opportunity to express my res respect to those in the front line, for example, the police and the specimen security cleaners and security guards, the volunteers, community workers, that they're willing to brave the epidemic and st stay fast to their posts and do what they can. The Over the eight, past two years, you're always on the front line. And now that we have this outbreak, the front line uh, board the front, and recently there are a lot of healthcare staff infected. You are braving the risk and uh, crushing workload. We all understand it. In the face of such undue pressure, and yet you are able to uh, dedicate to our patients, we are very gratitude for your contribution. And the COVID-19 virus, especially the Omicron variant, not only is just a virus, it's not just a flu it will lead to death and serious complications. We cannot and impossible to coexist with them. We cannot uh, let it uh, have an outbreak. With the support of the t uh, TCM and all the government resources and the public doing their bit to protect themselves to prevent unnecessary outings, please get vaccinated. If everyone can put their minds together, work towards a zero infection goal, we must and overcome every challenge. We can definitely beat back the virus. It's not just a talk. They, a lot of the mainland cities, they can survive a lot of past outbreaks. And Hong Kong could able to do so as well. Uh, let's uh, display some solidarity to ride this uh, storm. I so submit. Mr. Light Hong Kong. I speak to support this motion of thanks. First, I'd like to uh, salute to the anti epidemic personnel, the healthcare workers, the civilian forces, the contact tracers, the uh, logistic providers. Uh, you are the pioneers working silently for the public. In this COVID journey over two years and Hong Kong has been through up and downs, we overcome four waves of outbreak 
and achieve brief periods of zero infections. Unfortunately, brief good times doesn't last. The Omicron led to a tsunami and broke our defenses. And our cases rise exponentially with thousands of cases every day. The long queues of people waiting to get tested and the shortage of hospital beds and the overflowing isolation facilities and people waiting in lockdown to be hospitalized and well, uh, the whole family got infected and p parents bring their children uh, looking for vaccination jabs and Hong Kong is facing the biggest crisis and this is a varying phenomenon. Two years into the experience the journey, the previous experience cannot help us cope with this Omicron wave. We need to take drastic measures and change our strategy by mobilize all resources and manpower to take a precise approach on a, com a multi prong approach in front uh, testing uh, supplies and uh, treatment and the provision of fresh produce from China, we need to make sure uh, ensure these lifelines. The Hong Kong government working with the uh, Sunjin government and the Guangdong government has set up five task forces, which is very positive news. The Hong Kong public look towards the Hong Kong government and the central support governments and the Guangdong government can effectively and gradually a beat back the virus. President, to deal with this crisis, the SAR government should uh, rationalize and enhance the facilities. I urge the government to consider my following points. First, besides uh, besides uh, expediting delivery of uh, 100 million RET packs that could be distributed in an orderly fashion to the Hong Kong public, the government should mobilize political parties and district organizations to timely to distribute uh, RET packs to the residents, to the infected buildings, to residential homes, and high risk trade practitioners and clusters. And second, the, the RET packs should be delivered to all the families in Hong Kong. Even though the government has shown API on how to do an RT test correctly. However, uh, the public is still lagging behind on its proper use. The government should mobilize the um, social media and the uh, district organizations to teach the public on how to do the test correctly and decode the results. Second, those tested positive by RAT can only ask their family members uh, to ask for a deep throat saliva pack to confirm their results. We need to um, rectify this. It's so hard to get a saliva bottle these days. The government needs to ensure that the family members can get these bottles when needed. And when manpower permits, um we should also consider delivering the bottles uh, to the door, to their door. And I understand that XJ has already set up uh, seven dedicated uh, clinics uh, so that uh, they'd be uh, attending the clinic seven days a week. But then uh, the quota is only limited to 1,000. And uh, news have it that uh, today there are people who have not been able to um, reach them by making the call. We will have to ensure that um, we will be uh, able to mend the hotline so that uh, people will be able to make a, an appointment. And you also said that uh, a taxi team uh, or fleet will be set up uh, to take people to the dedicated uh, clinics. But then we have to point out that uh, this arrangement can only be based um, on the fact that uh, the relevant taxi drivers would be given sufficient uh, personal protective gear and equipment. And also, in terms of the protective facilities, uh, both um, in the front and rear of the uh, taxis and also both uh, online and so on. You would also have to provide training to the drivers as to how they can sanitize the um, the taxi cabin. And uh, the administration should also consider allowing those uh, who have been infected uh, to uh, make payments um, 
not by cash or else uh, that would only increase the risk of uh, cross infection and also for taxi drivers joining the program they should also give they, they should also be given cash uh, bonuses um, or incentives because uh, other cities have also made similar arrangements and uh, we should also take reference uh, from their experience fourthly if you look at uh, the lack of isolation facilities and it takes time to set up such facilities and the number of rooms and bed space uh, for this so will not be able to catch up with the rapid uh, spread of Omicron and therefore the administration will have to work doubly hard and if um, we have not been able to reach an agreement with the hotel industry then we will have to invoke uh, cap 599 prevention of um, prevention and control of diseases so that we can uh, mobilize hotels and other suitable venues for isolation and treatment purposes. Fifthly, the Privacy Commissioner, Ms. Uh, Chong Lai Ling, already said um, at the um, Constitutional Affairs Panel meeting of LegCo that um, to have this uh, tracking capability or function included in the Leave Home Safe app but would not be an infringement of personal privacy and therefore it's time for the administration to put aside um, the uh, mental burden and then we should uh, include this function in the mobile app so that we'd be able to identify uh, these targets uh, uh, promptly. And also for public hospitals uh, taking in these uh, patients, they are already overloaded. And therefore, the administration will have to come up with a more efficient package so that uh, for the um, for over half of the um, for, of the healthcare professionals in private practice, uh, they should also be mobilized in order to ease the pressure on public hospitals. Well, um, during weekends and holidays, uh, we have um, seen many people gathering in groups of more than two and um, the if we only rely on the um, enforcement team, so that would not be effective. And therefore, we should also ask the relevant um, uh, overseas um, consulates uh, to help. So that uh, we should also uh, try to adopt the carrot and uh, stick approach by giving them fixed penalty tickets. And also for elders, um, we should give them more incentives uh, to take the jab. Many elders have already done so, but then for the vaccination centers and private clinics, many of them are already saturated and therefore, on the contrary, now pe even for people who would like to take the jab, but they have not been able to do so because um, they are not able to get an appointment and therefore we should use the school campuses uh, for outreaching teams and now there is simply no face-to-face -face classes and therefore the mention or the notion of uh, having outreach teams going to the schools to um, provide vaccination services to the students would not be um, practicable. And therefore, we should uh, make use of the school halls uh, of these uh, vacant uh, school premises. And then if uh, we are not able to have enough manpower, then we will have to outsource it uh, to other contractors. And um, in the budget announced um, recently, well, the administration should be spending where it's needed and therefore we have to provide more relief measures and then we'll be able to target those in need so that different sectors and individuals can be assisted. In particular, for those uh, casual workers uh, working at the grassroots level and also for uh, freelancers and so on, we should give them relief money in order to ease their plight. We have to make sure that uh, they'd be given uh, timely support. Mr. President, uh, while we are um, on, uh, while we are fighting this pandemic, Mr. Xi Jinping has also announced uh, that uh, an all-out an all-out approach will be adopted uh, in helping Hong Kong people, and therefore, we will have to take this as our top priority. And whatever can be used uh, should be used, uh, so that all necessary measures uh, will be taken in order to ensure the life and limb of Hong Kong people can be protected, and uh, their health and safety must be assured and uh, the overall situation in Hong Kong must uh, remain stable. Once again, I'd like to welcome the initiative uh, by the central authorities because, of, because they have shown their care for Hong Kong and Hong Kong and the Guangdong and Shenzhen authorities have already had a second meeting on working together to fight the pandemic in Hong Kong and there has been uh, an exchange session and they'd be providing us with all our support and they'd be making sure that uh, all the daily necessities including food and vegetable supplies will remain stable and uh, task forces uh, have been set up to 
step up um, um, tracking of uh, cases, investigation measures, uh, and also vaccination of uh, the public and so on. With these, uh, with these support, the SCR government should unite together the entire community so that uh, we can uh, manifest the spirit of uh, the Lion Rock so that uh, we can work together in order to fight the pandemic. We will all um, overcome this together. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Dr. David Lam. President, as a medical doctor, I can see that a three-year-old kid uh, passed uh, away because of uh, the uh, because of uh, COVID-19, and together with my peers, um, I'm really heartbroken because I can see that uh, there are already over 12,500 uh, people who have been confirmed infected, and they are still waiting for um, treatment and hospitalization. Yes, um, in terms of our determination to fight the pandemic, I would like to give my full, full, uh, wholehearted uh, support to the administration. I've also written uh, to the doctors' associations and so on, in order to step up our outreaching efforts uh, for vaccination, so that I would be able to do this um, throughout the territory. And I would also encourage uh, my peers uh, to work together to do this. Well, the daily figure has reached uh, 5,000, 6,000 a day now, and that has already overloaded uh, the D of H capacity. So do we really have to rely on accredited laboratories to do the confirmative test? I think we have to be more flexible. Well, for the HA, they are short of manpower, and therefore they are recruiting more hands uh, to help. Well, I know a lot of um, private medical practitioners and return nurses, and they've been very proactive and uh, positive. But then they said that uh, the recruitment process has been very cumbersome and the progress has been very slow. Can the HA simplify or streamline the procedure so that we can fill the uh, vacancies more quickly? And according to some complaints from the HA, well, for those working in the hospitals, all right, they've been tested positive, and yet they will have to go back home and wait for a few days. But then repeatedly, they have asked, uh, they have been asked uh, by the departments uh, to submit their sick leave forms. So can we be more flexible about this? And also at the A&E department, well, outside of uh, those uh, departments, uh, many people have to be have to wait uh, um, uh, under the camp, and then uh, many people are just uh, shivering. Uh, in a cold. Um, so when the, can this end? When can we have sufficient isolation facilities to house them and then uh, for, to transport them to the hospitals and treatment facilities? Um, do we have enough capacity? I'm glad that a dedicated uh, vehicle fleet has been set up, but then we would also have to ensure that uh, the drivers will not be infected. And uh, doctors and nurses can also be mobilized. Uh, they can help train the uh, drivers in order to make sure that uh, they are better equipped and they are fully aware of how to uh, avoid infection. I think the healthcare professionals have been working very hard, and uh, I, sh I salute them for their contribution. And I understand that uh, they've been working very hard, and uh, would, without the support of um, big data, they are actually engaging in investigation and tracking work. And it's very, it's very difficult because of the exponential growth in the number of cases. And therefore, we will have to start with IT tracking. Well, on the 14th, um, the HA set up this hotline so that for those who are stuck at home to wait for um, treatment and so on, um, or they can uh, call this hotline. But then many people have complained that uh, they have not been able to um, get connected. And uh, today, I understand that some community clinics have been set up uh, to uh, see those uh, who have been uh, preliminary uh, confirmed, but then there are many people in the community. So, is seven clinics enough? Do we need to increase the number? We have also received um, inquiries um, from those at the workplace because um, if uh, they have colleagues uh, who have been tested positive and so on, for those co-workers, um, they will be very worried. In particular, for clinics, um, how long do they have to suspend their practice? And um, what would be considered uh, close contacts of the preliminary uh, infected uh, patients? And uh, would rapid tests uh, be sufficient? Do they have to take the PCR test? And when they call the D of H hotline, 
they will just uh, be referred to the uh, compulsory testing centers, and yet no answer is available. And therefore, in terms of the dissemination of information, can that be beefed up so that uh, people will find it easier to get what they need to know? Well, I, th I think uh, the crux of uh, fighting the pandemic has to be vested um, in the government, and uh, the central authorities can only help. We can make the best use of uh, all the healthcare resources, including the manpower and also the community facilities, other than recruiting private doctors, nurses, uh, so they can also take part in the vaccination program. It's time for public hospitals to um, beef up um, their triage system so that uh, for those uh, who have uh, mild symptoms, they can go back home. And for elective um, operations, that could also be outsourced uh, to private hospitals so that public hospitals uh, can concentrate on treating these uh, COVID patients. I think um, there are many who are willing to treat um, mild COVID patients, including private uh, doctors and even psychiatrists would be more than happy to uh, deal with the um, mental needs uh, of those uh, patients and their families. So we should not just be looking at uh, those are uh, working at public hospitals. Uh, there are half of uh, those healthcare professionals in private practice. They can also help. Well, Hong Kong's uh, healthcare professionals will be very dedicated, and they are willing to work with the administration so that we can work together with the community so that we can win the pandemic. So I support the motion of thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, uh, Mr. Duncan Chiu. President, members, this is the fifth wave of the pandemic, uh, and it's coming strong. Over a thousand or several thousand would be um, presumptive cases, uh, and there are also many confirmed cases. Uh, this also involves uh, a number of uh, elders and uh, young kids. Most people will have to wait for a few days before they can be hospitalized uh, or go into isolation facilities and so on. For tracking and medical resources, they have not been able to catch up with the speed of the transmission. Despite all that, as most members have said, uh, for those working at the front line, they are still holding on to their posts. And uh, I'd like to salute to them, including the healthcare professionals, the testing teams, and also the uh, retired civil servants, volunteers, and uh, also the discipline services. And as a member from the IT sector, I can see that many people have been working very hard uh, in order to uh, protect Hong Kong, and they are these unsung heroes. And therefore, I'd like to take the opportunity to say thank you to all of them. But then, if you look at the latest situation, there are already 12,000 uh, presumptive cases, um, and there are many people who have, who have to wait at home uh, before they can go to the um, testing center or the hospitals and so on, they are very worried uh, because they don't know what they should do and uh, they are concerned that they might be spreading it uh, to their family members and so on. And as Mr. Uh, as, and as Dr. Lam said, and I agree, um, there are many private uh, doctors uh, who will be willing to help and some of my friends are willing to do so. And uh, they've also t tested uh, with the telemedicine service that we provide um, online. Can that be open up to private uh, uh, doctors? Because uh, they'd be very happy to help uh, for free. So that for those who are stuck at home and uh, who have not been able to go to the hospitals, uh, they might be the uh, presumptive cases. But then for various reasons, they might not have been able to go to the hospitals or for, uh, they might not have been able to go to the isolation centers. So we can also ask the private doctors to help. So that's the first point. Second point, in order to allow people to understand more the epidemic situation, they have set up a dedicated website for COVID-2019. Uh, a lot of information is provided, including the uh, map showing the cases, and also to whether the, the, the buildings they are interested in uh, have uh, confirmed cases, etc. But some people have told me that the update is lagging behind. The information is not updated very timely. Sometimes it will take uh, four to five days to update the list of affected buildings. So people don't know whether the, the, those buildings will be subject to compulsory testing, should they go to work, etc. There are many problems because uh, in the past uh, it was updated once every day. But now the, the information overload has set in, and they can, could on, they can only update it every 
four or five days or four or five days later. I understand the difficulties faced by the frontline uh, people, but um, on the other hand, many people would like to get out of the updated information, especially information pertaining to their uh, homes, their their buildings. Therefore, we must ensure that the information is updated very quickly. Otherwise, the, the purpose is lost. Uh, in people in the IT uh, sector would like to offer a helping hand. So I hope uh, the government can consider uh, turning this into an open platform so the designated IT uh, companies or the IT personnel can uh, participate in the provision of information on the website. This would uh, uh, prevent abuse and ensure timely updating. And also the government should also improve uh, the uh, layout that design because uh, a person is not very friendly to disabled people or visually impaired people. I hope uh, we can improve it so that visually impaired people can also have access to, the, to this uh, in important information. I've asked the government to consider a number of suggestions. For example, making the best use of technology, making the uh, Leave Home Safe app uh, register in under real name so that we can have early detection and early treatment. We've seen improvement. And uh, we would like to see uh, uh, community resources utilized better by the government. I'm happy that, that um, President Xi Jinping has Mr. Duncan Chu, have you finished? Uh, you are off nine now, uh, Mr. Chu. Sorry, uh, there's a glitch. Please continue. I'm happy to learn that uh, the central government uh, under the uh, guidance offered by the State Council and the uh, NDRC have set up with, with a joint uh, mechanism with Guangdong government and uh, expert groups and uh, and uh, testing that technicians uh, will be uh, sent to Hong Kong together with other necessary test kits and uh, equipment uh, with the assistance and I believe uh, as the CS4A has said, we will be able to uh, stabilize the epidemic situation very quickly so that we can emerge from this uh, fifth wave of the epidemic. So I submit, uh, Mr. Kenneth Kuo. Thank you, President. Uh, General Secretary uh, Xi Jinping has uh, told us that uh, fighting the epidemic uh, is the top priority for Hong Kong SA out, and, uh, and they have asked us to take all necessary measures. I'm grateful for the advice. Uh, in many people have been uh, risking uh, the infection, the danger posed by the intention, uh, infection and uh, offering the testing service, and they have been uh, providing the necessary supporting services. I uh, have uh, I know some of the confirmed uh, cases, and I've heard some very heartwarming stories, and, that, and many people who are the, uh, receiving hotline phone calls uh, have been um, doing some uh, psychological counseling to those affected. I would like to thank all of the, all the people who have been off doing this for us. And also in this fifth wave of epidemic, everyone has been working very hard. But still, uh, there's room for improvement in our work. My friend went for to, to get a te test, and uh, he has waited for three to five, four days, and yet the result is not yet available. So uh, people are concerned that uh, they may uh, infect their family members uh, if they are actually uh, infected. So I hope the government can advise people on what to do 
if they suspect they uh, they have been they have come down with the virus, and there should be some instructions on how to use the self test uh, self test uh, kits. And um, as uh, Mr. Duncan Chu has said, we should make the best use of uh, private uh, medical practitioners. Use telephone, the remote uh, consultation service, so that uh, to assure the affected people. Recently, we have learned from the business sector that uh, tens of thousands of test kits will be made available to our people. The business sector, uh, like uh, electrical members, would like to contribute more. I hope the government can come up with some uh, guidelines on who would like to need uh, such uh, facilities and kits uh, urgently, so that we can all lean on our own uh, so, uh, resources to help. For example, we have many patriots, young people of uh, the uh, youth federations, both uh, at the national level and provincial level. Many of these people have uh, sent messages to me asking what they could do to help. Some can offer venues, some can offer certain products and other resources, but they don't know how they can uh, be helpful. So I hope the government can all give them some guidelines. And of course, uh, leisure and recreation is important to people's uh, f well being. And many people would like to s see what they can do in, in this epidemic. And a uh, mention has been made about a three year old patient who passed away. Many parents are very concerned. But bookings have been very difficult. The school classes have been suspended. And even if you go to a private hospital, you have to wait uh, a long time, sometimes uh, till the end of March. This uh, debate is about uh, emerging from the epidemic. We hope that when uh, the situation ha has eased, uh, the government can uh, re allow the recreational activities to the, to start again, so as to uh, help people in maintaining their health and well-being. Uh, Mr. Yim Kong. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my theme uh, is about using our resources effectively, so so that uh, to tell people that we have a caring government. Uh, many business premises have been forced to close down. Many businesses have are now uh, not in operation. Many people's livelihood are affected. Once again, our economy has been dealt a severe pro pro. Since the epidemic is a severe one, uh, well, I think we should first of all appreciate the uh, contribution of uh, all those who have been working to help us cope with the epidemic. Well, we should uh, learn from the lyric of uh, under the, line, the song Under the Wrong Line Rock. Let's work together and ride over the uh, rough spots and difficulties. It's, we must mobilize every resource and uh, community manpower so that we can uh, have a united uh, all front in fighting the uh, epidemic. Well, it may not may be difficult to stop all the transmission chains, which is widespread. We may not be able to just rely on ourselves. We should ask the mainland to help us so that we can have the best opportunity, best chances to get it done. For example, we can uh, invite uh, med mainland medical experts to help come to Hong Kong to help us. For example, we can each give, give them time limited provisional to practicing licenses. If we have a large group of um, experts coming from the mainland, we can use the cruises for the quarantine and treatment. And we can have more quarantine centers set up. And we can make use of uh, the newly completed public housing units to make up for the shortfall in the hospitals and 
quarantine facilities. And also we shall have to have to ensure the stability of uh, essential supplies from the mainland to m maintain stability and people's confidence. We have suffering from a uh, shortage of uh, cross-boundary truck drivers because of the epidemic. We should we should talk to the mainland governments and set up a green uh, transport channel for essential supplies. And many people are suffering from uh, income reduction because of the epidemic. They are suffering silently and the pressure from uh, livelihood issues. The Singaporean government has announced that there has been a marked increase in uh, in budget uh, surplus, and therefore, I hope that uh, twenty seven the twenty seven billion uh, rang of uh, AEF will will be able to be utilized in such a way that uh, people in need can be benefited. Uh, the uh, level of assistance may not be the sufficient to meet all the people's need and all the business uh, lost, but we just want to give them hope. Well, we should also uh, issue the consumption voucher at a level not lower than that of last year. This would uh, stimulate our economy and uh, promote growth of our GDP. The government should also consider that uh, this this year subsidies should be granted to people who come from the north, from the mainland, who are working here and paying their taxes. They are an important group in Hong Kong. Because of the epidemic, they are deprived the opportunity to be reunited with their families, and they have been staying in Hong Kong and uh, be part of the uh, country contributory uh, workforce to fight the epidemic. We hope that the anti-epidemic efforts can cover more people. And even if it's just a, a mere job in the pocket, but we should uh, do whatever we can for the common group, and we should cover every one uh, everyone as as many of them as possible, and it's also an important part in promoting the common good of uh, the uh, global population. With the government of the uh, with the support of the central government, I hope we can uh, fight, we can uh, prevail over the epidemic and uh, reopen our borders soon. Uh, Mrs. Regina Yip, thank you, President. I I thank you, Mr. President, that you you know you knew we would like to have a debate on the epidemic, and therefore you have uh, reorganized reorder the uh, priorities so that we can now speak on the epidemic. Well, as in the past, I will support the mo uh, policy address of the chief executive. I take this opportunity to thank the frontline workers, especially the healthcare staff, the disciplinary forces. Uh, are responsible for the cleaning and policing and logistics. I salute to them. I'd like to thank them for over two years to be serving the community and made immense contribution and selfless contribution and sacrifices in trying to combat the epidemic. This wave is unprecedented in terms of severity. Much more serious than the SARS in 2003. And we have the first case of the COVID-19 on February 13, 2020. Nobody expected it would last for more than two years and wrecking havoc on our economy and our livelihood. And that is the lesson that before being good on the task on hand, as reminded by President Xi, we should make fighting the epidemic as the overriding priority. I know that government is definitely not free at the moment. 
it should allocate some resources for the future. The Singapore has set up a committee on the future to plan for it. They need to look out for what are the uh, emerging trends and major challenges so we can plan ahead. How serious in this wave that uh, what well, that's been mentioned by a lot of colleagues, I would not repeat them here. As a mother, the passing away of very young children was very sad. Uh, well, this for the child who was just born for three or four years, the passing must be devastating. I send my condolences to all people, those who have lost their family members. Under the directive of President Xi's, the central government attaches great importance to our epidemic situation, and the Hong Kong Macau office, the Guangdong provincial government, under the leadership of the uh, uh, deputy premier, the, the Guangdong and Sunjun will offer the full support and plug any shortfall. As well, no, we don't have enough uh, testing capacity and treatment and isolation facilities. Well, uh, our daily supplies were disrupted due to the shortage of cross-boundary cut drivers. With support of the central government, we can resolve all these bottlenecks. However, it will take time. I hope that the government can let the public know that it's such a challenging period. We must be mentally prepared to fight a long war. Look at Wuhan. Well, uh, it spent 70 days six in lockdowns. Well, uh, it, we can't lock down the city that long. However, we need to have large scale testing. With the support of the five task forces, we will adopt a lot of decisive and aggressive uh, measures. However, this will take time. The public. The government should tell the public that it should be prepared to be in the long haul and stay unified to overcome this crisis. Well, uh, I would like to talk about what can be improved. Hong Kong has done a fairly good job, and we have quite some periods of zero cases. I wonder, did we get uh, complacent? And ignore the Omicron variant emerging and spreading rapidly in South Africa. In the course of finding the East wave, and uh, well, uh, Yen Chen and Ms. Kenway mentioned, and Mr. Duncan Chu had mentioned that we'd not leverage on technology. This Leave Home Safe app cannot do real time tracking. I pointed out so many times why that the secretary for uh, IT kept stressing that the app c could not uh, track locations, as if he's afraid that the public would not accept infringement of privacy. The privacy commissioner I pointed out clearly at the panel meeting to protect public health, the collection of uh, personal data will not be in breach of the privacy ordinances. Why the principal officials uh, has no uh, knowledge on how to protect our human rights? This Leave Home Safe app, of course, I cannot uh, compare to the health code or the Singapore equivalent. Well, the Singapore use a uh, Bluetooth to identify the close contacts, and the they hand out a wearable tokens to the seniors who don't know how to use a smartphone in order to track the virus. Back in two thousand two and three, the government start a. Uh, using criminal investigators to track the virus. As of this day, you 
are still enlisting 10,000 manpower to track the cases. This is ineffective. We should make use of big data, like Dr. David Lamb said. Our healthcare system uh, use of big data is far lagging behind. Of course, uh, I cannot expect the problem to be fixed overnight. However, in the long run, we must de leverage to exploit technology. We have been designated as the international IT hub. Uh, we have a huge potential in this. We need to leverage the big data. We need to see on how do we make up for this shortfall. Well, the men mail tracing is almost pointless. We must uh, dissolve this contact tracing office. We should send this uh, personnel to do something more productive. Besides, I concur with my colleagues. While the government civil service are working very hard, and a lot of the possible of appeal to their retired colleagues to coming back for help, and a lot of the retirees have volunteered themselves. Uh, Mr. Herringbaum, and former Postmaster General, he is working at the contact tracing call center and checking those wearing bracelet and uh, asking for proof of them staying at home. He has been helping the government for six months for pro bono, and he met a lot of the colleagues in the 80s or 70s driving to the office to work. Besides the retired civil servants, can we mobilize the other citizens? I hope that the uh, district office and the Home Affairs Bureau can coordinate the, the recruitment. Well, helping uh, the epidemic work is considered risky. I believe that with adequate protection, I believe that a lot of NGOs or political parties are willing to step up either to make phone calls or packing uh, RAT packs to engage in such work. And they may not be exp cost a lot of money. You should mobilize the civic society resources in case of the next uh, epidemic. Now I would like to talk about the toll on our economy. And last year before the Omicron hit, due to the strict uh, import case prevention policy, from we lost a lot of deals in the financial world. A lot of investors uh, considered our uh, immigration control. A lot of the family offices were relocated to Singapore. And more recently, uh, some people prefer uh, suggest using uh, cruise boats. Well, the uh, Dream Cruises is liquidated in the Royal Caribbean uh, uh, deployed their boats to Singapore. A lot of the sectors are hard hit. A lot of foreign investors could not uh, put up with such inconveniences. And some claim that if it's not reopened by June, that they will leave Hong Kong. And like uh, Mr. Sun Dong said, if we lose our global characteristic and networks, uh, how can Hong Kong contribute to the country? And what is our worth to the country? Therefore, we need to quickly overcome the Omicron virus. Whether for the local residents and the foreign investors, we should restore their confidence, so it can uh, we can restore our status at an international uh, trading hub and save it from lasting damage. I heard from the uh, local foreign experts and Hong Kong residents. Hong Kong people have been very patient. They're very willing to, uh, to uh, queue for testing if it, it, not waiting for too long. We are a very civilized society, and most of us are very rational. A lot of people told me that despite many sacrifices and two years on, when can we emerge from the epidemic? With the support of the central authorities, I hope you can provide a road map and a timetable. Or with the help of the mainland experts, uh, we we sh uh, estimate uh, when the cases will peak, and how many will be uh, diagnosed, and what is proportion 
of mild severe uh, cases and the number of admissions and when can we emerge from the epidemic we should give the public some hope as we need to take the three-step approach to restore public confidence first when can we uh, restart our economy and second when can we reopen our borders and boundaries with the mainland and abroad whether for humanitarian reasons or if, uh, for co business and commerce this is very important first we need to restart the economy and a step two to reopen our deal with the mainland and thirdly uh, gradually to re uh, re uh, start our connections with other parts of the world so that we can truly implement one country two system and restore our worth to the country and restore the Hong Kong's peoples and global investors in the Hong Kong economy. I so submit. Mr. Tik Chi Yun. Thank you, President. This fifth wave is in our doorstep, is on our streets and in our, our building and entered our homes and families everyone is so worried and we can feel it well with the fifth wave being out of control this is apparently the mistake of the government it could not prevent imported cases and stop the spread in the community first an it lacked a vision and being behind the curve the Omicron uh, potency was well known. Why do not anticipate the problem and shore our defenses? A government appealing people to get vaccination and tested. Well, the, the result is very long queue for vaccination and testing. Second, the lack of leadership. Each department is doing their own thing in the infected areas no one pick up the rubbish and how could people expect you to take on more major tasks and there's no cohesion and solidarity at the beginning the government is fighting a lot even though the logical members have provided a lot of advice however the government still insists on its own proposals and could not mobilize the society this time the central governments have decided to help the Hong Kong to withstand to survive this crisis in a high profile manner. There will be a great boost to our testing capacity and the, the respect and enhancement to our isolation facility. And there will be huge improvement in the supplies. Well, that would uh, restore our confidence slightly. But at the end, it will talk about the execution capability of the government. How much can the gov central government authorities help? We need to rely on ourselves and also the government should have the wherewithal and determination. I had the following suggestion for the government's reference. First, um, after two years uh, of managing panic, uh, pandemic, I think we should come up with a strategy as to how we can face um, or tackle this uh, pandemic um, in a way in the um, in the future. Well, we are now faced uh, with a battle and therefore we should uh, have this strategy in place and uh, we would also have to be all ears to views from various sectors and also you would also have to inform the public as to what your plans are so that the public will be able to tie in with your efforts in coping with the crisis um, and so on. Well, this is not just uh, about the fifth wave of the pandemic. Inevitably, we are going to have um, other crises coming up, uh, like the sixth wave or the, even the seventh wave. But then if we understand one another, then we'll be able to work together in a coordinated manner instead of just uh, doing this uh, in a haphazard uh, manner. And um, as many friends have said in the community, and uh, they are willing to help, and I think the Hong Kong government can encourage the private sector, including NGOs and also the district-based uh, health centers and so on, so that they can also join the team in fighting the pandemic. And in my community, for example, as um, a 
Protestant. I can also uh, contact my friends in the religious groups. Yes, we might not be able to share out the workload um, at the front line uh, by doing testing and so on. But then we can also provide support uh, for families in need. And I hope that uh, the government can also uh, call upon those uh, who are willing to help to uh, chip in. And if we are able to work together as a community, we can also um, win back the confidence of the community as a whole on the government. And uh, we can also mobilize uh, the um, district officers uh, in districts um, so that they can also play a coordinating role because uh, they have their own community networks and they are also able to reach out to the public. And uh, they are also having this uh, district-based uh, teams. And therefore, in terms of uh, pandemic management and also in terms of the support uh, to the community, if that can be coordinated uh, by the various district uh, officers, um, that would also be more effective. Well, I criticized the government. I did not just criticize for criticize sake. I hope that the administration can also learn from previous experience. And I'd also like to commend those working at the front line, including those uh, who are volunteers and also the professional teams and so on. I think uh, we should all cherish one another. Thank you. Next, uh, Mr. Sunny, Mr. So Chiang Wing, President. Um, well, uh, the theme of this year's uh, policy address is that uh, we should rise out of the pandemic. I have two messages to send out, and uh, with the um, uh, instruction given by um, presidency today, uh, I'm very confident um, in our ability to win over this battle. Well, in a policy address this year, the chief executive already set out everything very clearly. In the um, eight chapters, she, she talked about uh, constitutional arrangements, uh, people's livelihood, and so on and so forth. Well, she portrayed a very rosy picture for Hong Kong. And then um, in chapter nine, she also said that uh, we'd be emerging from the pan epidemic. Yes, despite the fact that uh, we have uh, a lot of things to deal with, but then the top priority should be stabilizing the pandemic situation so that it would be able to emerge from the epidemic. So I think uh, what she said was uh, very precise and concise, because without being able to control the epidemic situation, whatever plans we may have uh, will just um, be castle uh, in the air. And therefore, we will have to take this as our top priority. And that's in line with the advice from uh, our state leader, Mr. Xi Jinping. And therefore, we have to spare no effort um, in coping with this crisis. And as a result, the administration has come up with uh, timely measures. And um, the civil servants um, and also for those uh, uh, working at the front line, they have spared uh, no efforts um, in fighting this uh, epidemic. And uh, in this motion of thanks debate, uh, well, according to the um, agenda or other paper, emerging from the epidemic should have been the last uh, topic. But then, as uh, the president, Mr. Andrew Leung, and um, all those working in the secretariat, uh, they understand the sentiments of the community. And therefore, emerging from the epidemic has become the first uh, topic of our discussion. And that's the reason why we are now debating this. And because of their good guidance, all lawmakers are now reflecting the sentiments of the community to the administration so that we can put our minds together. And then uh, we would also set aside uh, our political views. The most uh, important thing, the reason why I have this confidence, that's because uh, Mr. Xi Jinping has been able to mobilize the entire community today. and. Um, Judging from his instructions, um, I believe that um, we should be able to win um, in the battle of uh, fighting the pandemic. Well, at the very start of the epidemic, the administration has never ceased um, getting the support from the central authorities. Uh, they have never ceased uh, working together with the state authorities. Uh, well, some might have thought that um, the HL government has 
been very reluctant in seeking the help of the administration. I'd say that uh, this has never been the case. The Central People's Government would also be more than willing to help. They would not just uh, sit idly by without um, offering us help. And uh, as Mr. C's instruction goes, Hong Kong government will have to take up the principal, or, uh, principal responsibility and uh, the top priority will be to stabilize the situation. In other words, the SEL government will be taking control and it will have to take up uh, the overall responsibility and it will have to make sure that um, everything will be done um, for the purpose of controlling the pandemic. And um, yes, uh, things might not uh, have been as good as uh, we might have expected. Uh, well, there is always room for improvement. I can also give you two small examples. Everybody knows that um, in the Leave Home Safe uh, mobile app, if we are able to um, have this uh, real name system included, then that would also help uh, in tracking down the um, infections. Uh, and uh, that would also help um, reaching the goal of uh, dynamic uh, zero um, COVID policy. That's, uh, that means uh, that we will be able to be very precise and concise and will be very prompt uh, in taking action. And if we're able to do all that without the real name mechanism in place, without being able to track down to all the individuals, um, then if we just rely on people uh, making inquiries, uh, doing the tracking manually, then uh, it's not going to um, lead us anywhere. But then because uh, there are concerns about uh, privacy and so on, well, they are not going, they said that, that they'd not be including this function in the apps. So I think uh, we should not um, allow private sentiments uh, to prevail over public interests. Um, I don't think that's uh, going to help. Well, just a couple of days ago, the Privacy Commissioner, Ms. Uh, Chong Lai Ling, already said um, at um, a panel meeting of this council, for public um, purpose, uh, if we were to enhance the functions of the uh, Leave Home Safe mobile app by including this uh, tracking function, there is no express provision under the law to ban this practice. In other words, um, she has already given the green light um, for this. So for the purpose of fighting the pandemic, uh, it's necessary for us to take the step. And therefore, in fighting the pandemic, the administration must uh, be able to resort to all initiatives, including IT means, including the use of uh, big data, and also mobilizing the entire uh, uh, fleet uh, to fight the pandemic so that we'd be able to act promptly and efficiently. And then in the end, uh, the limited resources can also be optimized. So now that uh, we have this uh, scale of um, the pandemic, if we just rely on doing manpower manual tra tracking, it's not going to work. So it's now a very critical time for Hong Kong, and therefore we should all work together to fight the pandemic because the most important thing is to stay alive. We have to make sure that we are all safe. And another issue is about um, foreign domestic helpers uh, gathering during uh, holidays and weekends. Uh, obviously, there are pedestrian precincts where they would normally gather together. Because uh, when there are crowds or groups together, it's very easy to spread the disease. And yet the administration has been very reluctant um, in taking measures uh, against them. Well, for Hong Kong employers, nothing can be done about it uh, because many do foreign domestic helpers, even if you ask them to stay home, if, if they refuse, then you cannot do anything about it. So can we consider enacting um, a piece of legislation as a contingency measure so that uh, we'll be able to plug all the loopholes where they are needed. So these are just uh, a few examples that I'd like to cite. 
we have been very reluctant um, in taking measures to pluck the loopholes. But now, Mr. C has already pointed the direction to us, and uh, he has also given us uh, the um, most important weapon to fight this pandemic. And therefore, we have to resort to measures that can deal with this uh, pandemic effectively. And we welcome the administration's initiatives to target this problem. Next is about vaccination. The um, chief secretary for administration also talked about um, testing, uh, tracking, and also treatment facilities. We are already overloaded. But then uh, he didn't refer to vaccination. So I don't know if the CS for administration would be classifying this uh, as part of the treatment facilities because uh, worldwide uh, we all know that uh, vaccination is the most effective means to fight the pandemic. And uh, it's also one of the most important tools um, in controlling the situation. And I've been very fortunate in the sense that um, I've been able to go with uh, Patrick Nip uh, to the districts uh, to visit uh, some citizens and uh, Mr. Nip has been very has been um, very patient. Uh, he has been advocating people to take the jab, and um, the SAR government has been publicizing the fact that uh, it has procured enough um, jabs uh, for the entire community to be vaccinated. So I like to use my own experience to illustrate. Uh, the nature of this problem. Just a couple of days um, for those uh, who would like to take the third jab, um, taking Beyond Tech, I spent 16 days to make the appointment. So, so just yesterday is the 15th, and uh, two of my family members would like to make uh, an appointment for uh, taking the jab, and they can only take uh, the 10th of uh, March. In other words, it took them 25 days in order to get an appointment. And if you go to private hospitals, if you try to make a booking online, you simply will not be able to do it because once you um, go to the website, um, all the bookings are full. So they are fully booked. And so you will not be able to get a slot. And if you try to get the um, uh, disc for the day, um, there aren't that many discs available and therefore the quota is very limited. So what can be done about it? Well, my personal view is that I'm strongly against putting the confirmed cases um, and the prelim cases um, at home because we all know very clearly that um, if you look at uh, the more recent cases, well, there are buildings where there was um, vertical transmission or horizontal transmission, and therefore, so long as there are cases uh, where people are subject to home quarantines, then the entire building will be affected. Uh, all the residents will panic. Yeah. Well, um, well, I don't want to go into details. You, you, people have seen the coverage by TV news. Well, in a, in one of the cases, uh, the government couldn't offer the manpower to remove the affected people. As a result, all former family members got infected as well. So it's faintly clear that home quarantine is going to involve a lot of transmission risk. We know in Hong Kong. Uh, many homes are small, they are congested, and if you allow people to do the quarantine at home, you are going to trigger a major risk. The CE, 
has uh, told us that uh, they would like to get uh, rooms from the hotels in Hong Kong and also newly completed public rental housing estates will be commissioned to accommodate uh, people put under quarantine. I'm glad to learn about this. I, I just hope that uh, such uh, measures can be implemented very quickly. I understand there are constraints, manpower, venues, therefore we are not the very uh, efficient in uh, dealing with the deterioration in this current fifth wave. I hope the uh, government should give more f thought to getting more resources and uh, marshalling more people and mobilize everything, every community, organization, uh, fraternity association, trade, trade associations, etc. to make up for the manpower shortfall. And also consideration should be given to the offer some opportunities to affected uh, businesses. Mr. So, please, uh, your time is up. Uh, Mr. Sunny Tan. Mr. President, Hong Kong the, did suffer a lot uh, due to the black violence and the epidemic, and we are facing an unprecedented social and economic crisis. And the central government, as in the past, uh, has offered help, to help to, so that we can uh, handle the difficulties. In the face of black violence, uh, the central government uh, introduced the uh, national security legislation and the improvement to the electoral system, and that's why we can have the principle of uh, patriots administering Hong Kong to, uh, truly and faithfully implemented. And this time, the central government has uh, again, once again, offered a helping hand. Uh, the epidemic in Hong Kong is now uh, very severe, and we have received an encouraging news today, which is very heartwarming, and that is President Xi Jinping uh, offer a very uh, his instructions on how to deal with uh, the epidemic in Hong Kong, and uh, shows. Uh, the support and care on the part of the central government for Hong Kong, and uh, Hong Kong is, is said that uh, the top priority must be to deal with the epidemic first to ensure the health and li lives of people of, Hong of the people of Hong Kong, and to ensure that we maintain our stability. The central government and uh, other uh, provincial governments of what do whatever it takes to help us. President Xi's uh, instructions uh, is a boost, it's a shot in the arm for Hong Kong. And every time that when we want something from the central government, uh, we would get it. So the central government is the uh, backbone and uh, the number one source of support for us. We should uh, do whatever we can to make sure the staff serves implementation of one country, two system. And facts tell us that uh, the motherland loves Hong Kong most. So I would like to, to offer my deepest appreciation and, th and thanks to the central government. I hope the SAL government, uh, everyone uh, working under the anti-epidemic uh, campaign to have to done their best and also to do their part in fighting 
against the uh, anti Hong Kong uh, elements uh, attempt to disrupt Hong Kong. The CS for eight uh, visited some Chan with a number of uh, policy secretary. Uh, a meet there was a meeting with uh, central government and uh, some Chan government representatives. And the CE uh, has also uh, designated five senior officials to head the five uh, task force and for the uh, inter interfacing of uh, efforts with the uh, mainland Gulf authorities. I'm concerned about the well-being of people who are uh, put under home quarantine. They are worried about their own health as well as that of their family. The government should give priority to the saving people's lives. More resources should be devoted. More land and premises should be devoted to this. And we should uh, try to lease more land for quarantine facilities from the private sector so as to cut the transmission chain as soon as possible. And the the government should cooperate with the private sector so that we can have more healthcare manpower, and we, there should be an urgent uh, implementation of uh, vaccination for young children, and also the introduction of uh, of uh, community wide uh, testing, as well as uh, asking for the real name mechanism be introduced to the uh, Leave Home Safe app. Co uh, better cooperation should be forged with uh, private healthcare sector so that we can have uh, this task completed as a matter of top priority. I am always mindful about the remarks made by President Xi that the, the central government has uh, the interests of Hong Kong in their heart a bit with the support of the central government. I believe that we will be able to come up with uh, effective solutions and curb the epidemic and win this uh, very difficult uh, war against the epidemic. With these remarks, I support the motion. Next, Mr. Dominic Lee.